we back. Hey, y'all. Welcome to another Thursday hey. of Ooh Ladies first panel. Bonnie, hey. Jamie. What's going on? Happy to be mm. here. Miss you What's guys. up, everybody? Oh, I love the softness because we in podcast mode. Yeah. Yes. Everybody talking down here okay. and trying to soothe the ears. Yes. Hey. Lord. <laughs> <laughs> uh, y'all already know where to follow us. Follow us at Ooh Ladies First. Jamie, that's me, Bonnie Blue, and myself at Nisi Dixon. Okay, let me flip over. So, how are y'all doing today? Really good. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing pretty good. I'm uh, doing pretty good. How are y'all feeling about um, my ex husband headlining the Super Bowl? Amazing. Yo, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Then I'm hearing he's going to drop like his concert dates or something. That's what I'm looking forward to the most. Yeah. Because I will be giving this baby to somebody so that I can be in there. Okay. Listen. Shaking the tail feather. Hold the baby. <laughs> I'll be back. Okay. And I said headliner the Super Bowl on purpose because I don't care about nothing else. <laughs> Come <Okay>. on, headliner. <laughs> right. Headlining the Super Bowl. I don't, I don't know who's playing. And then after that, the concert, y'all. Oh, I love that. The tour. I, will... I hope he comes to New Orleans. I don't know if he's coming here. Oh, he's I here, bet he, he would. You come to Atlanta. We will come to Atlanta, girl. We will. Because I need to come out bring there out anyway. everybody. That's the I'm show I was thinking about. Okay. Shit. I ought to go to Atlanta and Dallas. <laughs> Both I might have to do I'm that the way they was doing. Yeah, the way they was doing Renaissance, that might be how I have to do it. Oh, uh, Yes, we all have seen Renaissance by now. Thoughts? Amazing. Oh, nice. I was so tired. Honestly, I feel like it's longer than it should be. Because I was wore the fuck out. I felt like I stood on my feet and screamed so much. By the time we got <laughs> like two and a half hours in, it was like, okay, I'm tired now. Um, oh. But Beyonce, no, it was just, it was just such an energy like suck. Like I feel like I needed the whole day off the next day to sleep. I was so <laughs> tired, but I had so much fun. And, you know, I was there with my husband and we were sparkling and grinding on each other and drinking. And, you know, Beyonce gave us the energy we needed to get by that night. So I thoroughly enjoyed Miss Thing. I did. And I, I feel like it was such a cultural moment. Like, it's a moment. You know what I'm saying? And to actually be a part of the moment, to be present and, you know, see it all and everybody be sparkling and silvery and shit at some cowgirls funeral. It, it was just amazing. Cause that's what mm. it was given. It was given cow, famous cowgirls funeral, you know, because it was just like a lot of black and then silver and cowgirl hats, chaps, things of that mm. nature. Are y'all going to see Beyonce in theaters? Of course. I already got my tickets. I want to see the behind the scenes. I want to see, because honestly, I feel so exhausted being there. I need to know physically how she got through doing the show yes. herself every night for like that that what six months yeah I need to know what did you do what were you drinking how were you working out what was the conditioning like I need to mm -hmm. know see I want to go but you know I feel like I'm gonna be on high alert for delivery <laughs> so right. I'm like dang because I love her documentaries. I just love them so much. They just be so informative. So I feel like that's what she's going to give. Um, so, I mean, hopefully she released it on the streaming platform afterwards and I'm able to like catch it. But maybe she'll have it in theaters for some time. It might run for like maybe two or three months. We'll yeah, see. I think you're going to be able to catch it for sure. They're going to leak everything online. Watch. Ugh, I know. That's why I'm kind of mm. mad that I'm going to a Friday show instead of a Thursday night. God damn. Mm. Yeah. I feel like I'm going to have to see it twice, too, because they're going to be doing a fool in the theater. For sure. I think Usher deserves that opportunity because, you know, Taylor Swift, hers is supposed to come out at AMC this um this month. So I feel like with Usher doing the residency this whole damn year, high key, I feel like they should have probably given him a, a little theater, you know, thing to close out. 
or they might. Maybe they'll do it after he does the Super Bowl, and that'll be dope to lead up to his concert. So, yes, somebody put some respect on his name, please. ASAP. <laughs> okay, well, I got a question for y'all. Mm-hmm. Okay, so my question is to share or not to share. So let's say that y'all witnessed some suspicious activity from one of your friend's partners. Are you telling the people what you know or are you going to stay quiet and let what's done in the darkness come to light? It depends. Yeah. It like, depends what, on how what the kind of, is. I knew y'all was going to say that. Okay, you <laughs> said it depends on how the friend is. Does it also depend on like the circumstances? It different. <laughs> I think the circumstances, but more so how my friend receives bad information. Information, yes. Yeah. Like, and are you used to receiving this information and are you just going to go back? So what's the point of me even bringing it up? Right. I feel you on that. Have y'all ever been like, in girl, that mm-mm. situation? Um, no. Not that I could think of. No, I haven't. No, not, not necessarily that. I mean, I've been in a situation where, you know, a friend may tell me her business, as we all have, yeah, you know, when you're trying yeah. to gauge on how you should give this person advice about it. Because they I ain't trying to tell you a nigga nothing. <laughs> no. there, and there we go. There we go. Okay. I ain't got no, I ain't got no allegiance to him. Now, if okay. he was my friend and she really wasn't, then maybe. Right. But... You know, if it's her that's my friend and not him, then hell no, I'm not gonna do that. That ain't got nothing to do with me. <laughs> I uh, well, somebody said, Am I speaking about one of my friends? Nah, not this time, <laughs> not this time. But okay, I haven't been in this situation where I withheld information or like saw anything, I don't think I have, but. I plotted a situation like this to test to see if one of my friends would tell me, which is crazy as fuck. I don't even know why I did that shit. (laughs) So I was like, well, I was in the car with Ted. I didn't feel like driving. He drove my car back. This is when we, we was like in college and we passed like our apartment complex in college. And my friend was sitting outside the apartment complex waiting for the student bus or whatever. And I like bent over in the, or leaned over in the passenger seat so he couldn't see me. But he knew that he saw like somebody in the car. <laughs> so he texted me asking what I was doing. And I lied and I told him I was in class. And this is the friend who I didn't complain about a long time ago. I told y'all that he was really fake. And when we fell out, he was like making up lies about me. Do y'all remember that? Yeah. He was like making up lies about me to me. Like that's, that's what's so like, I'll never forget that. Anyway, I was like, I already had a feeling something was off. So I was like, mm, this will be so funny. Let me go ahead and test his ass. And he did not tell me a word. I was like, you know, I saw you at the bus stop. You know, that was me, right? <laughs> he was like, he was like, I was just minding my business, friend. Okay. But yeah, for me, I think it's dependent on who it is, like what y'all were saying. For sure. Well, take info different. Yeah, I feel like, mm, yeah. Let me not start talking about all my friends. Um, I do have an update though. Remember, I was asking y'all about one of my friends who um was always trying to go places with his partner. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. They ain't together no more. <laughs> <laughs> what? We keep telling y'all, you gotta have your own life, Savannah. They ain't together no more. Who broke up with who? It's a long story. Um, mm. It's a long story, but he is ready to do all the things now that he's single. Oh. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, but the reason why I was asking y'all about like suspicious activity from your partner and like, would you say something is because of this TikTok drama. Girl. Let's talk about it. I'm telling. Uh-huh. I am telling. I don't. I'm telling. I seen it, and I'm telling. Now, see this. I feel like it's different because with this situation, what this lady with the dress was doing, I feel like somebody should have told homegirl and should have told the girl in the blue, Rashandra. They should have had. Yeah, because see, it, it was more so about not so much as like the cheating stuff. It was the borrowing money for me. 
Yes, that was. Wild. That's the thing where I feel like you should have at least voiced a long time ago. And it was like multiple people. Like it sounded like okay. So to to run it back, I had never heard of this couple before. But once I did go through TikTok and saw like some of the videos, I was like, okay, I remember seeing this lady talk about da da da. This the board drawing this, drawing that, right? So anyway, we got Lus La Chandra, which is the one with the dreads. Ray Chandra, which is the one in the blue dress. They've been together for six years, and yeah, I mean, I guess she just found out that her wife was a scammer. And it should have started when she found out that her wife was a pastor. <laughs> oh shit! That's what that's what I said. That's exactly you said the what same I said. thing. That should have been the first red flag. The fuck? <laughs> How you a full blown lesbian but want to preach to somebody? I'm sorry, y'all. Something wrong with y'all? Yeah. A lesbian pastor. I mean, <laughs> Girl. now to each is you know some people be creating their own denominations and stuff like that, but like this right here. That should have been red flag number one for me. It's mad contradictory, no matter how you slice it. It's, it's, it's real contradictory. It is. We can just and say the it contradictions is what it is. kept coming. Lord have mercy. Um. Okay. So what it sounds like it started with is they was renting the house, and apparently they was renting the house from people who were their followers or her uh, Ray Chandra's followers because she got a big following, and. They, uh, Ray Chandra found out that LaShondra was not paying rent for a long ass time. I think it was like almost a year. And that was like step one. And then once she started explaining to everybody what was going on, it was like, okay, well, you know, she brought a thousand dollars from me for this. She brought a thousand dollars from me for, uh, from me for this. Not only that, she was scamming people for rent having Ray Chandra brother pay her rent on cash up and things were not being paid girl that is some shaky shit right there that money was yep. like government assistance money which is supposed to be like I think illegal for you to take money through cash app for government money well the housing but, was like hood housing so right. they weren't even they weren't supposed to pay nothing but she was mm. having to go behind and give they the you know whatever they you know get them cash, give her cash wow. from they like they checks or whatever like not not the government checks but like they working checks like whatever money they make from work. But that's where the issue became because it was supposed to be free because it was like a certain type of government housing. Yeah, so much was coming out, but I have to say, um, Ray Chandra had her clown mask on. I hate to say. It. I she hate to say it. I'm trying to understand she how she gonna get a, a couch or no I'm sorry a table for y'all house and say her mama gifted it to her or to y'all oh, in January and then by December the shit is getting repo like that was the first clue mm -hmm. I mean if you missed the, the if you missed Nisi's clue as she said the lady being a pastor the next clue should have been the fact that y'all shit got snatched up so why would you willingly give this lady money the next time around to just blindly pay the rent. That. That's when why. she said she was going to leave the first time, right? Yeah. 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 That was the first time. I'm going to tell you what it is. And I thought about this and I was like, it's because, especially with the, the, the church aspect of this, these mm -hmm. women, regardless of the fact that they are lesbians, they, or, you know, whatever they're attracted to in a marriage and a relationship with another woman, they want to live into these same gender roles that are yep. heterosexual, heteronormative gender roles. Mm. So even though Ray Chandria, a Ray Chandra child, however her name go Ray, we're going to call her Ray. Ray, even though Ray is the money maker and the more famous of the people, she's going to give money to women to pay bills instead of mm -hmm. doing them herself because she wants so badly to be resting in her feminine in some way. And that's why she's in a relationship with a woman that has braids and is wearing a tie. Like mm. it's it's a lot. And don't get me wrong, y'all. Like as a as a bisexual woman that has, you know, the affinity for a good stud here or there. But it just kind of it, it just I don't know. It just feels like it don't fit. It's not right. I'm looking at her glasses. I can't trust her. I'm looking at the combo of tie 
and 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 handkerchief and I cannot trust it. And I really do feel like Ray just wanted to act out a form of relationship that she felt was heteronormative. And it's just yep. sad because that's just, you know, that leaves you at a, a disposition where you're like actively forcing this, you know, the gender roles, even though you know that that's probably not the smartest thing for you to do. Yeah, I had the same thoughts. I I think that's why she didn't leave the first time. Because I could just imagine Ray using that word of the Bible on her and her sticking beside her, just like a straight relationship. Girl, this a whole fool. This is just the fool of a situation. Um I don't know what else to say. It's just a mess. Um, I'm trying to understand why your friend's just not coming out, trying to tell you this. Every time you talk to him, it's like, well, friend, bitch, what? Well, because friend, it's a new story. When they, when they was trying to warn her in, in less subtle, you know, in more subtle ways, I think she wasn't listening. So when she comes to him this time, it's like, well, bitch, we tried to tell you, but you wasn't listening. That's what he's giving. Yeah, it don't mm. sound to me like she literally had no clue. It don't make sense. Like, the thing that threw me was I had a comment up there earlier. How did you not know that she had never been in jail? Like, you didn't do your research on this lady? And then had the nerves to say that you feel like she intentionally sought you out, which she probably did because she went to jail for, for fraud. She's a con artist. She intentionally sought you out knew about your success or you was on the come up and decided to uh, basically tender swindle you, whatever that movie <laughs> is. And so I just don't understand why she wouldn't have done her research on this lady. And then the comment from the hairdresser, uh, the hairdresser saying that she heard from somebody that this lady had caused another woman to go bankrupt. Yep. That's wild. Know. Like, how do you and hold she, that information and you supposed to be my friend? Mm. That part. But see, oh, I just answered my own because maybe about how, maybe Ray Chandra don't take, you know, take that type of information well. So she just kept it to herself being like she was going to leave her nowhere. Based <laughs> on her YouTube real song, she probably like, I was just, girl, ain't going to worry about it. She'll find out. Yikes. Now, Circling back to that question I asked y'all, how we kind of talked about what the situation was. Mm -hmm. I just don't, I feel like this is absolutely a situation where I would have came forward and said, hey, your wife borrowed a thousand dollars from me. Like, yeah, when it, she's yeah. borrowing money. It's not like she saw her out there hugged up with somebody and can't really say if it's a friend or something. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's money. Yes. And then got people thinking that you got money for the both of y'all when you really just got money for yourself. So people over there looking at Ray, uh, Ray Chandra funny. But if y'all looking funny, why y'all just ain't approach her and tell her like, oh, I see you doing the bid, but we still need them, them thousand dollars. Like why you ain't been say something? And that's what makes me kind of, I don't want to question her story, but naturally that's what's happening, girl. It's mm -hmm. like, so ain't nobody saying that, like you owing no money, like you owe somebody a thousand dollars and during today's time, ain't nobody come to you and say nothing. <clears throat> I okay. think that the girl was, I think that, uh, you know, something about them past the preacher people, I think a lot of people are more inclined to be mentally malleable than they'd like to admit. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, yeah. You know, like people really be out here allowing folks to trick them all the time because they don't want to think the worst of people. They don't want to second guess. They don't want to rock the boat. And really, sometimes you should ask more questions. You should inquire. You should be like, nah, no, son, this don't feel good to me. Like you should say that shit, mean that shit. Don't always be guess, you know, second guessing yourself and trusting people just be like, oh, we friends. Because I feel right. like a lot of them probably. You know, took the approach of, oh, we can trust her. She's a pastor. She's our friend. Yeah. Nah. Yeah. Real yeah. Talk. But she just kind of looks crooked to me. So I'm kind of like, she does. She I'm does. like, how y'all just let her finesse <laughs> y'all the way that she does? Like, that's what I'm not understanding. Then this lady has talked about your own child. Ooh, and said, your daughter hard. needs to not ask for no money from you and this and that. But the whole time, you old as hell and ain't even got your credit in order. You and out here your mama to pay evictions. For stuff. That's what I'm saying. And you got the audacity. 
So I don't. Mm -mm. And you let her slide. I just feel like, you know, you got to say some piece of accountability. As much as we dragging her or Rayshondra went to social media to drag her, definitely got to take accountability for some of your silliness in this relationship, girl. Mm -hmm. That's now. all I was like, thinking the more she was talking. Because it was like, at first I felt bad for her, but the, the more she started talking, I was like, oh, shit, come on. <laughs> like, that's crazy. And, yeah, that's just, mm. girl, that is some messy shit. I'm over here wondering how she, how did she miss the first time that they got evicted? I guess old girl beat her ass to the house uh, quick enough mm -hmm. to snatch that shit off the door. For real. Because that's how she saw it the second time was it was on the door. She was supposed to see, but see, here was the thing for me, girl. Let me, let me be, Ain't no way, because what it sounded like how Ray told the story, it sounded like she said she learned about the eviction. She asked the girl what this is about. Chandra said, girl, I don't know what the hell this is about, right? I haven't talked to them. I don't know nothing about that. But then you telling us about a story of y'all coming down to Atlanta. And then this woman telling you she also defaulted on the loan. That was the thing for me. Because ain't no oh, way that you're going to get me evicted and think you're going to sit in my face in my car and then turn around and say... Oh, I defaulted on that loan that you co-signed for me. What? And then you talking about you don't co-sign for B-I-T-C-H's. Or her kids. Did she say that too? Yeah, yeah, or her kids. I would at least do it for my kids now. But, uh, yeah, no, not for this grown-ass lady. And then if I am going to do it, I'm going to be checking and making sure that you're paying this shit on time because you affected mine. Mm -mm. But absolutely not. Like, you just... Uh, Girl, you got to learn something from this. And I definitely <laughs> can see her excusing a lot of the learn BS. Learn something from this. Please. We were all rooting for you. Exactly. I could see her, you know, wanting to, like, excuse a lot of her behavior because, again, she did say that a lot of people grew to knew them as a couple for the past two years on social media. So I feel like because of the image they were putting out there, that's probably another reason why she was just also letting stuff slide and just continuing to let it slide. Although they've been together for six, that's the other I was thing. I just people. about to say that. Six years is a long they, time for this to you. just now come out. Come on. Now come on, Nisi. Because you, 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 you start showing your truth. by this. You know what I'm saying? You sh she should know who the hell she is by now. Especially the way she they put up her records. I think she knew who she. I I think the writing was on the wall the whole time, but now that she's at the the climax or the highest point of her success, I think now she like hell no, nah, I'm leaving. Let me tell y'all everything. She, she didn't tell us everything, not even everything, but I'm sure the stuff that she's telling us has spanned beyond just like the past two three years. I'm sure it's shit that had happened in year two of their relationship. <laughs> Absolutely. She got something to lose now. That's why. She like, okay, yeah. Huh? Yeah. She took me to fuck out when she said, when was, the, when was the last time the rent was paid? She said, I don't know, May, June. She said, bitch, it's September. <laughs> That's some wild stuff there, girl. That is wild. I hate it for And her. you just been taking money. Then the church is money. The lady didn't get her money for the Airbnb. The church said they gave the money to Chandra. And you just, so my thing is, where the fuck is the money at, ma'am? What was you doing with the fucking money? That's what if I want to know. Money I was like, bitch, everybody. drugs? Is she addicted to drugs? Drugs or because gambling? Is she a gambling? <laughs> Were I'm you trying, holding yeah, up another family? And gambling and drugs are basically the same thing when you really brought down to it, because y'all be doing the most. Yeah, it's all the yeah. addiction. It definitely sound like, yeah, it gotta be gambling. If she, it do, is she a pastor with no congregation? Ooh. Good night. Ooh. Good night. Because I wouldn't trust her with the church's money. No fly. And that's what the you people say. Then she steal from the church. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. She One of the people mm -hmm. stole from the church's money. Ain't that bad? She bitch. is uh the bishop of TikTok is what it's giving. That's where her audience Not is. And she comes with the uh devotional signing. Uh, straight up. Can I am I bitch. able to share some, Nisi? Uh I go ahead and try. Okay, let me try and see if I can share this. Let me find it. It's just people's um, reactions because I love this video. Let me see if I can share it. Are you able to? 
Yeah, I can add you to the stage. Two through four say this. Hold on. Consider it pure joy. Uh, hold up. Okay. Oh, I gotta add. Oh, there we go. Go ahead. Let me know that y'all can hear it. James one verses two through four. We can four hear it. We good. Consider it pure joy. Uh. 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 Mm. No. <laughs> no. Somebody called a La Contra. <laughs> <laughs> you must oh do time. That don't make no sense. <laughs> <laughs> oh, stealing from the Lord's church. Then somehow a minister can't be in the Lord's church now. Cause now that's the topic for another day. Then how the dining room table get re- Man, what? <laughs> <laughs> Rena Center coming and collecting it all, man, what? Ain't no way. Ain't no way. It ain't even no must. It ain't even no must. You're doing it. You got to do that time. You know, TikTok get hold of it. Then they start doing what they doing with it. I don't even know. I ain't even watch no videos. I was just on live and these people just told me the, the basics. Then to my the refrigerator or something with man, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I just know with from those three things right there, somebody going downtown. I, I just don't condone. I just I can't condone in this. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's not her real name. She's a fake landlord. She committed fraud. She stole from the church. She talked about the kids. She played in Ray's face. I don't know why I feel so connected to this story. I follow one of them and she is incredible and I love her, Ray. I, I am invested. I know so much and know nothing at all. I am in, but I want to be out. I feel like I'm sitting at the grown folks table and I shouldn't be here. Like I overheard something about my daddy cheating on my mama with my auntie and my cousins and all of them knowing I wasn't supposed to hear it. That's how I feel. Um, where's the money? Have you ever met someone that just would not tell the truth? Yeah, you. You literally ran a whole op on your wife for six years. Do you know how wild that is? I, for one, I'm incredibly disgusted by you and so disappointed. And the fact that there are people in your comments talking about we want to hear your side of the story. There's no side to the story here. This woman was in jail for fraud, jail. And her mom kept that as a secret as well. Her mom wasn't shocked, horrid to find out that her, her daughter was scamming. Her mom knew. And then on top of that, eh, listen, may the IRS come knocking on your door for accepting rent through Cash App. Cause that's a lot of money over a year. Prison will see you and they'll see you soon. As a black lesbian me. on this app, for many of us, <laughs> your relationship with Rashandra was probably the, the largest representation of black lesbian marriage on this app. And there are other black lesbian couples that I do follow well, and I love them dearly. And I'm so glad that's that so we sad. have them sharing their stories and just making themselves visible for us because it's not a lot. But for you to put your wife of six years take six years of her life to run an op put her kids at risk it's disgusting and i don't really care how much prayers you pray fam i i i am wishing and i'm praying and manifesting jail for you and may your sentence be long and may your sentence be hard that's all i am tuned the fuck in into this Lashandra. Lockhart, I am tuned the fuck into this shit. I cannot believe this. I I love it seeing the songs of them together and they be doing their little things. Da, da, da. You where the fuck this money at? <laughs> you had stole the late them as the shit unraveled. You had stole the late motherfucking money. Where is it at? Then you cheated on the two. I say no, not Lashandra. I'd have never thought that would have been Lashandra. Bud.
nagging bitch. Ain't this a motherfucking shit right here? You trust a motherfucker with your shit and then they go and just, just imagine being with a motherfucker that lay down with you every night. Every night I got to fight to prove my love. And let's say you paying three, four thousand dollars for all your, you know, your life living a monthly. And let's just say the person who you lay down with been pocketing it for eight years. Bitch, you got to die. I'm pissed off with LaChondra. LaCondra? You must do time. You got to do time, baby. You got to get behind. And then, my whole thing is, you on TikTok on some, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want type shit. Girl, no, yeah. You gonna meet a goddamn shepherd when that motherfucker bite your ass when you get in that goddamn police car. Got me, girl. Mm, 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 mm. James 1, verses 2 through 4 say this. Consider it pure joy. LaCondra! I know you is not sitting on this app giving us no goddamn Bible scripture. After that lady got on live last night telling us that you done got a fucking dining room table repossessed. That lady got on live and told us at least 17 grand larceny charges against your ass. And your response is to come on here reading a motherfucking Bible verse? That lady got on live and told us that you got her, them kids, and all them fucking Christmas decorations evicted. And this is how you choose to respond? Not only was that lady cheating, word on the street is, LaShondra might not even be her real name. Lord have mercy. They looking up her criminal record and can't find it because that ain't her real name. Come to find out they met on social media. LaShondra jumped in her DMs and wanted to take her out. This sound like some single white female shit. Then her mama said, everybody lie. Everybody lie. No, y'all lie. Y'all some liars. She came from you. <laughs> the apple don't fall far from the tree. God damn it. Lord have mercy. I think they was in it together. God damn. Oh, so she then came up with a whole new, whole persona whole name to get Rashandra. Yep. That's what I think. And you know lesbians move quick. So she was probably like, oh, she got her name just like me. We meant to be. Look at that. Girl. So there's that. I just wanted to share that with the people <laughs> real quick. Can I ask a favor? And now she got a name just like me. That's funny. They move quick. <laughs> Can you guys uh, that do these background checks help the people out and just drop the names of the websites y'all may go to to do these background checks? Help the because maybe they don't know where to go for anybody okay. that's, that's meeting new people at this time in their life. Yeah, I got a friend who need to run a background check on somebody. So, yeah, drop the links. Ooh, I'm going to remove this, Nisi. Okay, cool. Okay. So, um, yeah, I don't know if that's the end of that saga right there. Hopefully it is. It's probably but it's not. probably not. <laughs> no, yeah, probably girl, not. the way they pulling up this lady records and stuff. Girl, I it feel like more kidding. tea gonna be coming out. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. More saga. Yeah, I guess so. All right. We're gonna move into oh, one of the things I wanted to say before we got started is this episode is very much themed. Um, unintentionally. I guess it just seemed to be the theme of the week. I need like my astrologers to hop in the chat and let me know what's going on with the stars and the moon. Um, because this episode seems to be breakups and reality TV. I don't know what's going on, but we're gonna take a second to get into some gossip. We're gonna talk about married to medicine being uh, the trailer being dropped. So let's go ahead and get into that. All right. So I think the trailer officially dropped today for Married to Medicine. Did y'all get a chance to look at it? Yeah, kind of. Real quick. I said I was going to watch it again. But I saw a little bit of it. Yep. You know, I saw from, it. Yeah. Okay, okay Bonnie, right. go ahead because I can hear it in the tone of your voice. <laughs> as soon as you start the trailer with a whole bunch of flashbacks, I take it. Yep. Uh -huh. yep. You say what? As soon as you started with a bunch of flashbacks, what? 
I tap out. Like, then I feel like oh, you ain't really shit. have shit going on. So now you need to fill this trailer with a whole bunch of, oh, where we've been versus where we are, which is no damn where. Like, I also, I feel like they good for trying to hype you up on a trailer. And then we get to the season and it's nothing like what the trailer was given. Um, Married to Medicine love hype up their seasons. Like they love it. Oh girl, we done did this and we done did that girl. And then we get to the season and it's like that. See? <laughs> so yeah, the trailer just didn't give me a, a lot as far as I was. Hey. I agree. Um, I had the exact same thoughts. Whenever they and what I noticed is, and a lot of the people in the comments noticed was that they had Mariah in the trailer for more than half the trailer. Ooh. And yeah. Yeah, it would almost make you think that she was coming back, but uh, obviously she not. So it was just given they didn't have nothing to talk about. And in the little clips that they, you know, show Phaedra, I feel like she going to give exactly what we thought she was going to give, which is pretty much nothing. Like, let mm -hmm. me collect the check and try to be unproblematic. Um, But yeah, I couldn't even tell what we could expect this season. Like, it just was not a very exciting trailer to me. I love that y'all highlighted that. I am over here skimming through the trailer. And I do feel like for at least one minute, at least like close to one minute, they're showing flashbacks. And it's a it's a lot of people that they're showing that's not even coming to the season. Contessa's not mm. going to be there. Mariah's not there. Like, what was the reason? Y'all could have just gave us the, the one minute and 30 seconds or whatever. That's interesting. Mm. I don't know what they're going to give. I'm still looking forward to it because I feel like it'd be more entertaining than um, Housewives has, has been. But we just will have to wait and see. It do feel like somebody's missing, though. Like, as you like, it just seemed like somebody's missing. But I don't know who. And if they mm. was going to show all them flashbacks, they definitely needed to show, no, bitch. No. Bitch. <laughs> like, with, with Mariah and, um, What's her name? Start with a T. Toya was was fighting. Like that's the flashback I was looking for. But no, nah, they wanted to keep it cute. So it's whatever. Um, but along with the trailer, I wanted to get into some of the looks. The pictures are from Love B. Scott. So when we look at these little outfits, you're gonna see the B. Scott across their bodies. Um, but y'all get the gist. So how y'all feeling about <laughs> their cast photo in the outfits? I think I like the color. Real Housewives of Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the color. Because it's, it's blue, teal kind of color again. Um, I feel like Dr. Simone is so off. Latoya seems to be off as well. I don't, you know, everybody else seems to get the teal vibe except for the two of them. Um, who is the new girl? I don't like her dress. Um, uh, Dr. Alicia. She heavenly yeah, friend. Um, and yeah, then the new friend. The wife. Oh yeah, Tasha. Yeah, uh, over here next to Quad. That's the one whose dress I don't like. Not the one mm. next to Phaedra. Cause she oh, okay. Too. Yeah. Um. What? What is? What's going on with Phaedra? I wanted to say Portia. I don't know. I don't like it. What y'all think? I like her dress. I hate her hair. That's the first thing that That's I saw. I is. said, I said, you're gonna have to let this blonde go. You are not Nene. You are I don't I hope you ain't come over here thinking you're gonna be the Nene of this show, but it's the blonde for me that you've been forcing on us. Um, and I just I can't take that. But I do think Phaedra does look beautiful. I do love the dress. I just don't care for these long blondie locks. This mm -hmm. woman standing next to her to me kind of resembles a bit a, a darker version of Simone. And I actually think that she I think she's very beautiful. Very, very. I think she's stunning, actually, um, from this photo. And I actually like her dress. I think she looks cute. Toya, Toya look good. Toya look like she don't win it. Like she's been working on that body or something. Like Toya looks good. I like the color. I think Toya color kind of next to this woman, Dr. Alicia, whatever her name is. I think it, it complements it more standing next to her than whatever Simone got going on. Simone. Yeah, the three to the right kind of flow a little bit. Yes, they do. I like you, Simone, but girl, I do not like this outfit you have on. It's giving ordinary Simone. Even Jackie kind of gave, gave us some a little different. I'm disappointed a bit. Quad. I don't like this see-through dress at all. I think the color is 
pretty but i just don't like this dress but okay i'm with bondi on this young lady's dress next to quad i just i wish i could see what the front of it looked like i hate that they gave us a lot of front photos but then gave us a side picture of this young woman so i i don't know um i think dr jackie looks beautiful and i think heavenly looks good too i'm like heavenly didn't slim down i think she said she had got a little lipo or something so i think the ladies overall is a cast pick i think they look nice overall as a cast yeah, um, the new girl, Tasha. Yeah, did y'all used to have that story? I got you. No, I don't think so. <laughs> I got you was like the Asians, like the Asian store in the mall, like a papaya or like a Windsor. Um, that's the way this dress is given, you know, where you, you go get a, you say you want to get a formal dance for like the damn 10th grade homecoming and it's like it got beads on it but the dress is soft has no structure that's what um Tasia's dress is giving to me I'm shocked that her and Dr. G got a 20 year age gap because that's something that they gonna talk about on the show too oh sheesh no yes that's gonna be her her um storyline oh but man. they gonna sign the shit out of her the whole season I don't think so. I think they gonna hype her up just because she is the new woman and Quad gonna be there. Okay. We shall see. Um, as far as Phaedra, I, I hate everything about it. Um, everything. <laughs> Maybe not the shoes. The shoes can make it. Uh, mm -hmm. Everything else can go. Um, that blonde is just like too stark for me. It just is not complimentary. Um, it's almost white blonde, which I think makes it more like jarring. The dress is too much going on. It's kind of like you got to pick a lane. We got titties, we got legs, we got the high low. It's just a lot. We got the ruffles. It's, it's a lot. Um, Dr. Alicia, I feel like that's a nice, simple dress. She kind of reminds me of Contessa, just because of like the facial structure, like a mm. military Barbie. <laughs> I work out Barbie. She look good. Um, Toya looks really good too. I think last time we talked about Toya for one of the reunions, I felt like she ate the girls up. And I think that this dress has like a similar silhouette. Mm -hmm. So I like it. Um, Dr. Simone, I she tried. She really tried to give sexy but like in a appropriate way by doing the skin tight latex kind of dress. Um, really? I think she did, but I just don't, <laughs> it just didn't execute. Like that's not mm. the hair for that dress. And it's just something missing. It just looks like she's still in the try on phases. Like this ain't the finished look. Mm -hmm. I like Quad's outfit. Her dress is really cute. I like the hair. She looks good. I already talked to y'all about the new girl, Dr. Jackie. I don't care for the dress, but we really didn't expect nothing else. And Heavenly, uh, the, she look good. Body look good. Dress look good. Hate the hair. Hate it. Um, it's just the way that the color, the roots is fading into it. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like the blend yeah. should have just been a little bit more expensive. So... Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, yeah, I don't know. I'm excited for the season, but the trailer didn't really move me. I'm hoping that they just, you know, keeping all the good stuff in their back pocket. I mean, I like Dr. Jackie's dress. I feel like that's, I like that silhouette on her body type because she's so, you know, thin and up and down. It adds some mm -hmm. body to her. Yeah, I agree. I think she looks too cute. <laughs> too cute that reminded me when she was at the reunion with the uh was that her or was that Simone with the ponytail or the half up half down do y'all remember that I think that was Simone maybe so cute okay well now that we on this trailer kick another trailer dropped and that is Real Housewives of Potomac I really like these new cast photos. They look so nice. Yeah, I just want to do some hair changes. But I do think overall the ladies do look nice. I will say that. Like, I would have changed Giselle's ponytail, 
Candace's blonde piece up there. Robin's hair would have changed. So, yeah, just a few Ashley's hair changes. Hair change. You don't like she it? I thought how, Ashley was too cute. Like how really? Yeah. Lying. Girl, I don't like her hair for her small frame. I like her Robin hair a lot. Mess. Oh, what poor Robin. I say I like Ashley hair a lot. Oh. Giselle looked like yeah, she's still know. picking her ponytails behind the counter at the maybe beauty spot store. Closer, maybe if I could see a closer view of it, because from here it looked like a lot of hair on her little bitty body. Um, I think mm. Giselle and Robin both look like they got their clippings from Shein or Amazon. Mm. And they look, um, Karen. Karen look good. I'm glad that Karen is in the middle of the picture. She look like okay, the lion. It or not. She do look like a lion by the face. I don't like, I don't like it. She, you know, it's too, it look like it's too much Botox. Um, I don't like that hair on her. I don't. I, I swear, I wish that she would warm it up just a little bit because she's so bright that I think it washes her out sometimes. Candace, do not like the bouffant being the blonde color. Like, yeah, no, I don't like that. Um, mm -hmm. I think Wendy is shitting on the girls this season. Girl, <laughs> I have to agree. I have to agree with that. Mia was so ordinary. And then this young lady on the end, what's her name? Nika? Nika? Girl, um, I was waiting. I was waiting to get started on her. I already don't I like was her. Gonna ignore her. <laughs> I was going to ignore her. I was going to ignore her. Not ignore her. You don't even know who he is. <laughs> yeah, I oh my know God, is. bro. <laughs> I ignored it because I don't know who that is. Mm. Yeah, Wendy ate them up, though. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think anybody said anything about Mia. I just had me a little ordinary. Oh, uh, okay. She, okay. she was very like safe with her look. Yeah. Forgettable. <laughs> Not <Yeah>. forgettable. <laughs> I'm screaming. <laughs> I forgot she was there. I <laughs> know. Uh, and low key, that's usually Robin. I think Robin looks better than what she usually does. It's the hair that's not given. I Did think that if she would have had. She just looks so much a mess that you have to pay attention to her. No, I question I... if she stressed the hell out. Ooh. Oh, you know she is. She just so just she hell. looks much slimmer this season. Um, yeah, in her but photos, the hair looks so cheap. The hair looks so cheap. I have and to agree. And that's what I'm. That's what I'm stuck on. But you're right. If I look closer at her face and body, she look good. Yeah, it's just the hair. If she would have done mm -hmm. this look with a different hairstyle, not that damn yeah. red wig, not the pixie cut, maybe the bob, maybe. A yeah. I yeah, like yeah. I like short hair on her though. Mm -hmm. Me too. Mm. It was Rob. She don't know what to do with her. Hmm. So for the trailer, did anything stick out to y'all? This trailer also, um, I couldn't gather too much from this trailer either, honestly. And I don't know if it was just me. I mean, it was two things for me. One, um, Nika coming for Wendy, and it's giving unwarranted right out the gate, but we'll see how it plays out. And Mia coming for Ashley, asking her if she married that man for money. And I'm kind of glad that somebody else coming for Ashley, and it's not just her and Candace. Do you really think Mia is going to come for Ashley, though? I don't know. Probably you not. Know that she girl. wants to be whatever liked by the girls. Yeah, this is probably she whatever a... she needs to do. Yeah, a, a two a, second a dig. Yeah, it ain't. I don't think it's gonna be like the whole season. I'm sorry, y'all. My mic is low. I see y'all saying that. It's it's uh -oh. weird because it don't sound low to me. Yeah, me neither. Yeah, I don't know, child. We are gonna leave it where it's at. Anyway, um, what I did see, I think you know, seeing Karen call Mia a trick, oh, or a treat, or whatever she called her, I was like, oh, yeah, she called her a trick. And then having Giselle talk about wine and where wine be at and, and Robin sitting on the curb never meant to cause you no pain. Yes. I just want right. to go back to feeling the same. You know, I only want to make things a ride. Um, yeah, I just, I kind of feel like, girl, it's embarrassing. Wine still don't care. He ain't here and he don't care and it's still embarrassing. And I'm just embarrassed for you. Uh, and I she think up there crying. Think she is and then Ashley talking about her titties but I'm like are you still married to Michael though thank Hello. you Bondi thank you that's what yeah. we want to talk about 
fuck out of here. Ain't he suing Candace? Fuck out of here. Uh-uh. I don't, I don't like think she's going to talk about her marriage to Michael this season at all. It's just going to be like, we just forget about it. Mm. That's what she what I was Yeah, I was expecting some sort of continuation, some sort of closure on like, what are you doing? Where you at? As she said, she got new titties. That what she said. Mm, okay. Mm, she's still married to that man. Child. She gonna uh she like Kenya. Not even though, because Kenya really ain't with Mark. She she's still tied to this man. But it's something about being a wife that I think they like. It don't even matter if they're together or the marriage working out. But it's something about being somebody's wife that I think they like more than they would like to admit. Mm. Who, uh, who whenever you say that, who are you uh, Kenya, speaking of? Kenya and Ashley. Oh, okay. Uh, you Okay, I didn't think about that for Kenya. Girl, when Kenya, when Kenya said that shit about not, you know, wanting to have a baby with Mark to make sure that the kids came from the same daddy, I was like, yeah, she's still... <laughs> Some still ain't quite right about the league. Yeah, some is see, I'm glad y'all said that because I don't think that that's something that we ever talked about because I felt like I, I couldn't connect it. I couldn't connect the dots. And, you know, everybody's rebuttal was like, oh, it's because she had to. But I'm like, come on now. Mm-hmm. Personally, I don't think I could do it. But She went through way too much with him. Yeah. The battle they're having is the fact that he will, like, fuck with the control she can have in a situation with her daughter to get back at her so now you gonna give him another child to do that with yeah exactly that's crazy that's what I was thinking to me it just seemed like it would be no peace for her so that's why it didn't make sense to me at all yeah that's silly as hell why would you do that what kind of trauma has been going on that that's what you will continue to want in your life shit we don't (laughs) we don't I hate it all to say that you got the same your kids got the same daddy <laughs> what if he don't really do for brooklyn then you know he's gonna be a completely absent dad to a child that you didn't set up there and put inside of you like what chloe wow. chloe Mm-mm. that's what she mm. did um courtney chloe chloe bailey i mean not bailey i'm sorry chloe um <laughs> a kardashian yeah that's what she did and that's what courtney did too um her and Sky had been broke up, and that's exactly what Kim did with Kanye. They all did that. Shit. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. The other one too, Kylie, it was doing that with Travis. They was broke up when they had when she had the second baby. What Child. is the point of that? To keep him? What's that about? To they want they all their the kids to have the same daddy, even though they don't. So I'm like, what's the big deal? Ooh, Nisi. Even though <laughs> they, they don't. don't. So mm-hmm. what's the big deal? That is a fact. There. It's a great question. It's a great question. Hmm. Why? Why do you care? And his ass over here getting called out by his other baby mama for not doing his part. While Kim over there praising him for being a great dad. Girl, I don't give a damn what nobody's talking about. You can't say you're a great dad to one of your kids. I don't, I'm sorry. And you got other ones out there. That's not that great. Yeah, You might be a piece ones. of good. I guess, but if you got other kids out there that you ain't do, uh uh-uh, uh, that's not great. No, that's not. No, uh-uh. you taking care of, whatever kids you taking care of, you probably taking care of them because you 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 hunching on the mama. And exactly. that's not about the kids. That's about the fact that you want to continue to hunch on the mama, and you know a part of hunching on the mama is being a somewhat good parent, depending on what that mama standards are. So, yeah, I I, I kind of feel like a lot of these niggas, like, it's weird the way women will try to use babies to control men when essentially, like, they don't really care. Right. Because right. he going to do what he was going to right. do. Exactly. Like, it, it matters not. And y'all really be out here like, oh, let me hurry up and put his baby in my womb through artificial insemination while we on a breakup. Like, what the fuck? Crazy. What the hell? Well, why would you even want that? That's not going to make mm-hmm. him come around? Oh my God, I hate when people do stuff like that. A lot of people are sitting in delayed breakup relationships or or whatever right now. Why would you want to? Yeah, it's a dating pool that small. Mm-hmm. Apparently. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. Um, but yeah, 
I pulled up this. Well, hold on. Before we do that, I feel like the Potomac trailer really wasn't given because we didn't have but two words. Did y'all have anything else in Potomac? No. Not at all. Okay, I didn't think so. I just didn't want to rush away from it because it was like, Potomac, okay, bye. Because <laughs> it wasn't given at all. Um, but I pulled up this Real House Live trailer because, I mean, we kind of segued into it perfectly. Um, Candy, she actually uh, did an interview and they asked her her thoughts on if Real House Lives of Atlanta actually did a cash shake up. So I know this is something we've been talking about for a minute, but Candy finally addressed it. So let me go ahead and play the clip and let's talk about it. Do whatever you need to do. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I feel like, you know, see, I, I've been out here 14 seasons, right? So I've seen, you know, different castmates come and go. Some I was sad to see go. Some I've seen go and come back. And um, I know people constantly need to see change to feel like they're getting something. You know what I mean? So if they feel like they need to make changes, then find a cast that you think is going to work. Yeah. Do I think they're going to find a whole cast of people that's going to work and satisfy our fans? Probably not. Mm. So, um, mm-hmm. um, go ahead. What's your thoughts? I was just going to say, I think she got a point. Are they going to find a cast that people are actually going to like? Nope. They not. It, it ain't going to matter. I feel like it's kind of hard to please the fans in general. As um, soon as we get new people, we're going to be asking for the old people back. I feel like we kind of do that already with some of the new ones that we do get. People still asking for Portia. People still asking for Nene. People still asking for Eva, uh, Claudia, whatever the case is. So I don't think that the fans will ever fully be satisfied. Um So I think that Candy has a point, but I also just feel like people sleep tired of TV. I do. I feel you like you said tired like, of TV. Mm-hmm. Tired of like reality TV and stuff. That's like when I be seeing that the views, people talk about the views a lot and how they're not great. I'm starting to see that it seems like it may be across the board. It makes me feel like people are getting woe out a bit with I think reality television. I think reality TV has gotten to a predictable point. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. We're no longer surprised. Everything is basically the same foolishness over and over again. Yes, very overproduced. Um, it's disingenuous. Like, for example, mm-hmm. Love and Marriage Huntsville. I think that was the last time we were all like enthralled in a reality TV show. And it was simply because they were so honest about what was going on. From yep. then on, they have continued to protect the truth of what goes on from reaching the show and to produce what they want to be seen. So that that's a theme, not just with Love and Marriage Huntsville, but that's a theme with everybody. That's a theme mm-hmm. on all the shows currently, that they mm-hmm. are being produced in a manner that feels like a lie. It feels like it's not the truth. It feels like whatever the truth is, it's not really being shown. Now, I'm going to tell you, the only time recently is with Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. I'm not this season of Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. They actually hit us up with some shit that was going on in real time. You know what I'm saying? And we were yes. able to kind of see it. And it did, you know, it did go viral. Did it have like long lasting effects the way some of the other shows you, you know, the way seasons and past? No, because that took the whole cast having shit going on. Um, not just one or two people, you know, I think they've done too much with having certain characters there to carry the story from one person to another. Too many Carly mm-hmm. Reds in a building, not enough, uh, Bambi and Scrappies, not enough Erica and Safaris. Like as much as they're annoying, they're at least giving us content. Whereas I feel like all of the other people just be here talking to the camera and arguing with each other. And I think you said something important about like that real time because uh, for a lot of the shows, I feel like the drama be happening on damn social media. And then a lot of times when we go back and watch Love the show, we, whoop, there it is. We never really see what happened on social media because, you know, it, that's going to blow up even bigger. We never really see that translate or play out on the show. 
And I think Love and Hip Hop was a great Atlanta was a great example because we saw some blow ups that was happening on social media, like with the Bambi scrappy thing, all of that. And we just saw it kind of all play out on the like it just they made it make sense for everybody. They tied it in. Um, I don't know what people are doing now with they storyboarding and so I don't know what the hell going on. Yeah. It's not um, landing. Hey Scotty. What's up, Scotty? The ladies' night and our rhymes is tight. Yeah. Um, what a night. <laughs> I feel night. like Drew kind of brings that. And that's what she brought. Like, I can't imagine what the last two seasons of Real Housewives of Atlanta would have been like without Drew. Um, she kind of gives like this, she's naive, is what it feels like <laughs> to me. And I feel like that's what used to make reality TV good, is because people used to come on and just kind of do whatever. And I feel like even if they find new people, they're gonna find new people who have been watching reality TV for I don't know how long and they come on the show and just do whatever they're supposed to do, Mia. So mm-hmm. I have to agree mm-hmm. with Candy that if you just go find a group of new girls, I don't think that it's gonna hit the same. Like you're gonna have to keep some girls in the mix. Um, but the thing is, I think like Kenya said this when she did her interview with Carlos. The way they used to vet the girls for the show used to be much more rigid. Like you had to have money. You had to have everything, you know, on your own. You had to have some sort of like in on the show. Now they interview these girls, pull them from the streets. And then all of a sudden, you know, they're your friend. And you end up with their husband at the end of the season because y'all weren't really friends. So, yeah. They can blame social media for that because I feel like some of it, if you don't have money, they try to look at the whatever influence you might have for some of them, not all, but for some. That is like, true. oh, you got that's the following. Currency. Yeah, that's how they they flip that. So mm-hmm. that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, I kind of um, want to see Candy back though. I, I kind of don't want a whole new cast immediately. I feel like it should be phased. You know what I'm saying? Right. Just, what dropping off one or two. Yeah, Courtney. We can drop back. off half. We can drop off half. Well, hold on. Let's keep three. If I had to keep three, it would be Drew, Kenya, Candy, and then bring on four new girls. I could do that. That sounds good to me. I could and then eventually it. phase Kenya and Candy off completely. Leave Drew on for a little while longer if she still got something going on. And then we'll, you know, by then we'll have a whole new cast of people to be worrying about, hopefully. Yeah. We shall see what the plan is, what they're going to be doing. Yeah. Um. Hold on. When would they start filming? They would start filming at the beginning of the year, right? Possibly, because I know Sonya did an interview not too long ago where she talked about how um, nobody has heard anything yet. This was before the Candy interview was dropped. She did an interview with two something in a pie. And um, yeah, she said nobody has received anything. None of the ladies, they don't know if they coming back or not. Um, I believe she said that she thinks that uh, the production staff or people in, in charge are trying to like figure out what direction they're going to go. So nobody has heard anything. That's why she came out with that post a while ago telling folks on social media, if you don't know what's going on or you don't have like true facts, hush, like stop talking because it was like creating conflict to where she was, you know, people was wondering like, dang, did you hear about this? Did you hear about that? Like, so basically what it made me think is that Sonya was checking to see if she still had a job based on some of the rumors and stuff that was out there. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, because I heard she was getting fired and I was happy about it. I'm sorry, Sonya. I hate I hate for you to lose a job, but you're not doing yours. So you're annoying. Mm-hmm. No, nah, yeah, we don't need nobody to come on a show and be who they think Cynthia was. Low key, I think that's what Phaedra's gonna try to do on Married to Medicine. But oh, really? Oh yeah. I think Phaedra, I don't think Phaedra is gonna get I think Phaedra is gonna collect a check, listen to the girls complain about stuff. But not really insert herself. She might bone yeah. carry a little bit, but mm-hmm. I don't think she's gonna insert herself really. Yeah, you're right. I can see that too. It's Heavenly gonna ain't gonna idea. let her. Heavenly gonna remind her ass every chance she get that this is my show. <laughs> this is not your show. She be signing her own bestie quad. So we know she's gonna sign the hell out of Phaedra. For mm-hmm. sure. 
Mm. Well, y'all, y'all know it's usually breakup season, like a little closer to the holidays, because those when people be trying to uh, keep their funds tight. And they be trying to break up before the holidays or people like, I don't know. I be hearing two different things. I be hearing like once it start getting cold, that's when it's cuffing season because you need to be laid up in the house with somebody to keep you warm. But then I think it's around Valentine's Day. That's where people be ready to break up. But it just seemed like this past week was breakup season. But if we really think about like this whole damn year, can y'all imagine what that compilation would be of all the breakups? And we're not even really getting to all of them. That would be horrible. It actually would be sad. Yeah. They oh, yeah. might want to put uh, End of the Road as the um, audio on that. Because somebody going to do it on TikTok. <laughs> somebody going to start singing that. For sure. I mean, somebody going to create that for yeah. TikTok. And they just need to add the right music when they do it. Cause it's gonna happen. They do. And they don't even have to mix the shit. Cause they getting carried away with these mixes on TikTok. They mix anything. <laughs> they are. <laughs> <laughs> it's like hot. Too much. Oh, okay. So the first couple we gonna talk about is Mia and Gordon. Mia and Gordon. This one right here um, smells like some bullshit to me. Um, but y'all tell me what y'all think they've been together for 11 years they're separated and they exclusively told people which sounds interesting that we hear about this as soon as the trailer drops which is because it was in the trailer but y'all I don't think that they splitting up because to me I was just in the kitchen thinking I don't understand <laughs> like before we went live I was like really thinking I, I don't understand why Mia and Gordon would break up like it seems like they have i feel like majority of the time that people break up it's because they don't have freedom in a marriage to like be who they want to be do what they want to do majority mm -hmm. of the time um it could be finances as well but obviously that's not the issue with them well i don't think so it seems like he got plenty of money but it seems to me like they have a free relationship they can pretty much do whatever they want to do gordon can sleep with other women they sleep with women together me living a lifestyle she want to live so it's just hard for me to think that they will leave and we ain't really seen no issues so i think that is cap that's what i'm gonna she call got kicked it out that business that's yeah. the number one she thought I he had some leverage she... and realized he don't <laughs> right he might be well, going broke <laughs> oh he got kicked out too i forgot we he talked did. about that at the reunion mm -hmm. yeah so i think that might be the reason why she like can't do it anymore babe gotta go find somebody with real money you know and plus she's in this Period. space now where she can go and get young dick like if she's on real housewives of potomac that means she's gonna get her own check she may not have to go and look for old balls um and she might want to get some new ones that you know bang her out who knows uh either way i feel like yeah it's given you got to get out of there so he could possibly go find somebody to be with him until he die. Because, <laughs> you know, I'm just saying, when they get older like that, you know, you don't want to stay with him too long because you don't want to be the last wife. If you don't want to be the last wife, because the last wife got to take care of people and wipe asses and stuff like that. I think she's trying to get out of there before she, you know, becomes the last wife. Mm, that's a great but, point. I couldn't see her wanting to do that. Yeah, but I can also believe that they pretending so that they can have drama for the season and Mia is just mm. copying what Ashley is doing. I can see that. Now, now see, now y'all got me in the middle, okay? So at first I was like, nah, I don't think that you faking this at all, right? Y'all got me questioning because we know how Mia has come to the front and say that, oh, you know, hyped up the cancer scare and other things that she's done where she pretty much lied about stuff. Right. So we know Mia got that in her just to get a bit of attention. But what made me think that this was not fake was the fact that G was willing to give tea to to Candace and Wendy about his wife and mm. reached out to the other husbands and said that he left her. He's done with her. So that's what made me believe, okay, this must be for real. But then also I saw a report where G was trying to say that he's hoping that he and his family can get it together. So I'm like, well, which one is it? Maybe you was just mad at that time when you wanted to air her out. And then mm -hmm. now you're at a place where you eventually want to work it out. Like, I don't know, but that's what made me think that it probably wasn't fake. But if I'm getting conflicting stories and shit, it probably is fake as hell for a damn storyline, I guess. 
It might be. I ain't trust nothing with Mia. Mm-mm. Nah, she a big liar. Uh, let me read these super chats. Uh, thank you for the super chat, Lady T. And then California Cutie said, Miss seeing y'all faces, sending love. Follow all these ladies on all platforms. Smash the like button. Thank you, California Cutie. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'm not, I don't know. What Bonnie's saying is making sense, but I don't know if I'm really going for it. Because G is how old? He in his 60s. I think he's 70. I think he had a 70th oh, birthday. Okay, okay, yeah, she is in. Um, yeah, she's trying to dip in because I was thinking if he was in his 60s, I'm like, oh, she ain't got to dip just yet. <laughs> but if she ain't trying to be the last wife, maybe she she should. And then this comment said the, the last wife, wife gets the most benefits. You know, I really don't know if that's true. I always heard that the first wife does. Um, especially like, if she got kids, that's my assumption. The first wife, yes. Yes. And like when he dies, no matter if he remarries, the wife still gets his uh, benefits. The first wife. That happens to my wow, great aunt. That's messy. She, my great aunt divorced her husband. They was divorced for 20 years. He had a second wife and they was racing each other down to the social security office. And the first wife got it. My great aunt. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> racing each other may she rest in peace okay now the next couple we got is Monique and Chris now this is no surprise um, mm-hmm. but their divorce is finalized as of September 25th um, and to me it felt like it moved pretty fast the documents for the divorce are sealed so we don't really know what's what we don't know how many houses she got anymore but um yeah, I think, like everybody was saying, Kenya should, should take note. This was a swift divorce. Um, so I wonder what we'll be seeing from Monique. Y'all think she's going to be on Instagram posting like Tia? Nope. Um, I think Chris is. Yeah, yeah, he he more so probably going to be trying to thirst trap. She over there posting vacations with her kids. Yeah, he had posted something about letting things go or something like that, or when God ain't got something for you or moving on. Some some he posted on his page. So and he posted I, workout videos too. So yeah, yeah, that's what I was thinking about. I think Monique is going to lay low. I think she's going to enjoy this new space that she's in, not being so much in the public eye, but you know trying to figure out a way to still maintain the audience that she's captured from them. I say give her maybe two, three years. I think she's going to try to resurface again. Um, Only thing with Monique, because I do see her going back on her word in the near future, I, I just don't like when she speaks too soon about stuff, like how she said she would never return to Real Housewives of Potomac. I still see that as a possibility for her. Mm, really? I, yep. I still see her probably like after three years or so, two, three years or whatever, her kids are getting old or whatever. I could see her probably wanting to ease back in, maybe as like a friend of the show, if if the show is still doing good. Shoot, Candace ain't going to be there. there. That's <laughs> what I'm thinking. Like, it's probably going to be like Candace going to be gone, doing whatever she do, acting, whatever she's on. And I could see Monique sliding in as a, like Yay. a friend of. And honestly, even if Candace is there, I still could see like Monique sliding back over there, like on some friend. Like, who was on Real Housewives of Atlanta as a friend that we didn't see a whole lot, but we saw, I, I guess enough of. Sheree. No, sure, Sheree. Um, ain't that the lady name? The one who claims she's the real grand aunt. Oh, Sharice. Oh, you talking on Real Housewives of Potomac? Oh, yeah, probably like, yeah, probably like, like Sharice. She slide in for a little bit and then she go away. Well, mm. that's not really what Sharice did, girl. Sharice was trying to get her a moment, but, but I can <laughs> see, I can see Monique um doing that. Yeah, I hope she don't don't come back, girl. It, it's not safe. It's toxic. It's colorist. It's weird as fuck. Don't come back. I do wonder if she's going to try to book other shows, though. Like some of these housewives leave and they get the opportunity to go and do Big Brother 
or do like some type of um, fitness competition type shows or something like I think Portia was on the show was it gladiator or something like that so I do wonder if she's going to try to get those other opportunities or if she's just going to really completely like withdraw from the public's eye and just do her radio show and just be a mom and that's it I wouldn't if I was her I, I honestly hate that Portia doing the shit <laughs> just because mm-hmm. why why are you doing that outer space tv show why I, I just wouldn't do it i really wouldn't big brother because why you want to sit in the house do nothing else yeah i, I guess i just would not i wouldn't do it i wouldn't be doing wouldn't that, them extra shows no nah. so now you're up there trying to you know i think stay relevant just in case something happened with Simon. Um, so that's why she do these little small shows, but it still looks stupid. <laughs> yes, it looks stupid to me. That's so crazy. you get back being a housewife, making way more money and doing less work. And that's stay, ex- you won't go exactly and be what I be thinking. What? A fucking gladiator? Yeah, it, whatever, Portia. And yeah, it'd be the I'm most random get- cast of people too. Yeah, it do. And that's what makes it weird for me. Like, because it's always like, oh, great. We're going to have a racial clash at some point. Yes. Like, no, thank you. We're going to build a, a white a white alliance. Uh, I'm going to have to call you out about it. It's weird. <laughs> Poor Portia. Poor ladies. Mm-hmm. Good luck, Monique. Good luck, girl. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, last breakup we gotta talk about tonight is Tamar and JR. Yeah, that was gonna happen. <laughs> it we... was not even I don't even think it was two months ago that she went and did that Ebony and Ivory ass billboard mm-hmm. in New York. <laughs> you yep. remember we was just talking about that. And we like and she was supposed to be having a a shared YouTube channel with him. They're supposed to be doing something together. Yo. Uh, even more looking a fool. Yeah, and that didn't even come to pass, girl. That is sad. I hate that. She always yeah. looking for a man. Like, girl, why you can't never just get your life together? Like, she is always looking for somebody to lean on, somebody to come in and save her. And it's just sad. Like, girl, save your fucking self. Why don't you be alone and be happy on your own? And then maybe you can find somebody. But the fact that you always trying to force force these strong connections so that you can say you have somebody is just you know it's sad you know it uh, it does come off like she has something to prove to people of some sort because it's like when she gets these men she tries to force them in our face in my personal opinion so it just it's like are you trying to get back at Vince or something are you trying to prove anything to somebody because you gave us the most when it came to David and I feel like we saw David and it just wasn't connected. We saw that that was nothing. And then you get with this man and he just seems like he enjoys being the bachelor that he is. He makes it seem like he fell in love with you, but I really don't believe that. I'm sorry. I think he really liked her or whatever. You talking about JR? Or JR. I don't. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't think. I mean, he may have proposed for semantics. Like that's the whole purpose of the show. So don't make it seem like you really proposed because that's what you wanted. Like it, proposing was you winning the show and getting her to say yes. So I don't think that that was really genuine when I look at how he is on social media. And again, I don't know this man personally to fully know, but looking on the outside, it's like, I think that man just enjoys being a bachelor and unattached to a lot of women. So he can go and do whatever it is that he wants to do. But I do question also, Tamar, did you turn that man off when you was trying to comfort Candy and Todd? You get him caught up in your shenanigans and stuff. And then you had the baby mama calling you out. So could it also have been a few things that happened that made him be like, okay, yeah, I'm gonna go on he here did and say straight that. out. He did say that he was returning to positivity or something like that. So that's what made yeah. me feel like, yeah. It's her. I think it's two things. I think two things are true. One one of the things that stuck out to me in his uh, Apple Notes. No, it wasn't even no Apple Notes press uh, release. Notes. It was it was an Instagram story press release. Um, one of the things that stuck out to me is that he went ahead and answered like nobody asked him I'm sure people was asking him in the comments but you have to answer the fucking question he writes in his letter 
No, I never cheated. No, I wasn't there when she was at her mother's place when her car was burglarized. But he mentions that he broke up with her. So to me, I just feel like that was so unnecessary. And it was kind of just like, I'm the one that ended it, which kind of felt like you was chasing clout. Um, mm. But I also do think that she was a, the getting back to positivity uh, from what Bonnie just said. I think two mm-hmm. things are true. She probably was dragging him down and he probably like, hey, the juice ain't worth the squeeze. I'm going to head out. Yeah, for sure. Because then she came back to social media talking about he broke up with her within the like what an hour after her car had been broken into or something like that. I said, yeah. girl, after an hour? Now, what kind of yeah, is that? She said all that shit happened at the same time. And I was just like, damn, that's sad. Yeah, that sounds weird. It, I wonder, he must have been at his wits damn end for her to be at yeah. the house crying about the breakup for him to be like, yeah. And on top of that, I'm going to remove myself. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. I just couldn't imagine him feeling like that was the appropriate time to break up with her unless, I have no idea. I couldn't even imagine what was going on for, for him to want to do that. Yeah. All I know I is know. it feels as if he was running from the situation by the time we got here. Like the way she blew the robbery out of proportion, like you had your stuff in your car talking about I don't feel safe anywhere. Why don't you feel safe anywhere? Why don't you have a place to live where all of your shit can be? Why don't you have a doorman? Why was somebody able to like ransack your car for like 30 minutes in the parking lot before somebody called the police? It's real weird. And I just kind of feel like Tamar, like, were you living with Jr. and and like, what, what what's the deal? Like, why don't you have any stability for yourself in a place that you feel safe? It just kind of feel like she was trying to invoke sympathy with the way she was talking about it. Yeah. And I feel like she probably took that same approach with him that tired him out because it's probably not the first time she's done it. Yeah, that's exactly like what I what I'm getting. She just was too much. Like, I hate to say, like, her sisters always tell her, like, she too much. I think she just, like, really piled on him a lot of stuff. And it was just like, listen, I I can't be a therapist to you. Like, I just can't do that. Like, if I'm getting the therapy that I need, you need to go do it, too. Who need Iyanla after she had Iyanla and disrespected Iyanla and her mama told her to shut the hell up? Hey, I was about to say, I thought she had She worked five (laughs) minutes, and then Tamar went back and she was. Exactly. And it's sad because I do like Tamar. I will be honest. I do like Tamar. I would like to see Tamar win. I think Tamar wants to win, but I don't think Tamar know what the hell to do. She get in her own way. She does. Yeah, that's what I think it is. She tries mm. to calm down and be this quiet person and whatever and what it that's just not her personality. And then she come back out here and she just on some other side. I don't know. I don't know, Tay. But we wish oh, no. you luck, Tay. Maybe we it's for the best if you're not with that man. I mean, and yeah, that's what she gives, said in her post. He gives, snake, she... he gives snake oil, you know, salesman type thing. Oh, mm. salesman. Oh, man. Um, When she made her post, she said that God was making room to get things out of the way. So she was trying, making it sound like, you know, learn from me. I'm accepting this with grace. He did break up with me. Is basically what her post was given. So, I hope that this is, you know, headed towards positivity for the both of them. But I just hate that every time we see her, like, I don't know. I feel like every time I really see her a lot in the media is when she got a new man. So, Mm. mm, I don't know. Yeah. Now she got this tour she doing. So, I hope it, I hope it does well for her. Yeah, hopefully so. But all right, y'all, it is time to get into TV talk. Let's start off with uh, which one we want to start off with? Let's start off with Miami. Okay, I wanted to start off with Miami Mm because I don't know, out of the two, I feel like I just favor Atlanta. Um, but <laughs> so shout out, I think it was Sasha. Uh, shout out to Sasha that tagged me in the comments on Instagram. And she tagged me in a clip of Amara 
in Safari and she said, Amara got her clown mask on like she always do. <laughs> and I was like, okay, that's too funny. So basically, mm, two main things happened this episode. For one, Amara was upset with Safari because he was on Twitter talking about FaceTime sex. And she was like, clearly you're not having FaceTime sex with me, so who you talking about? And then she also mentioned him doing an interview talking about the one that got away. And this episode to me, I, I don't feel like I've watched Love and Hip Hop like with so much focus since Safari has been on the show to realize like how much I dislike him. And this episode made me feel like that because he was so calculated to me when he was arguing with Amara like she would pour her heart out crying about something not to mention she said she was going back home because her daddy was sick and she would just talk 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 talk, talk express herself and he would sit there in silence <laughs> and mm. to me it was like him trying to take ownership of the conversation of her feelings like it was him just like asserting his dominance like yeah i run this now you waiting on me to respond and he did that so many times throughout the episode so Mara ended up going home and when she goes home, she says she found out that, you know, it, it wasn't the worst. Her dad doing fine. But while she's at home, leave it to Ray J to come on here and, you know, have some dumb discussion. He come on the show and he ended up telling Safari that it looked like Amara was back home thirst trapping. So now Safari's ego is hurt when he really wasn't moved at all about Amara crying earlier. Now that his ego is hurt, he want to come for Amara asking her what she was doing down there. Was she thirst trapping for her baby daddy? So they meet up, get into an argument, and she ended up throwing a drink at him. It's like a real verbally aggressive argument. He ended up calling her a bitch. And the episode pretty much ends right there. But let me not forget to mention, he told her, don't act like you're not getting bookings because of me. People wasn't thinking about you until they start seeing you with me. And I was just like, wow, Nikki really did a number on your ass. <laughs> because I just feel like every time I seen this man in the episode, he used the opportunity to show that he was main character and that he ran that shit, which I know he probably never felt like with Nikki. So what were y'all's thoughts on Amari and, uh, Amara and Safari? Um, I just would like to say first that um, Safari and Erica are like the same person. And I just want people to get that. They're the same person in different ways. The fact that this bitch called um, Spice a monkey and made the sounds and then he turned around and called this girl a bird and then start making the bird sounds. I said, yeah, y'all hoes should have stayed right. together same. because y'all the same bitch for sure. Um, Safari, I just, I mean, he just irritated me sitting down with Amara and actually they both irritated me uh, because I'm glad she did say like everybody tried to tell you so I'm like, he gets on my fucking nerves. Everything that he doing to her, trying to act nonchalant and not give a response and stuff. Of course, he did that stuff to Erica as well. And I'm sure Erica was somewhere sitting around enjoying the fact that he was doing this girl like that, right? Um, but also, Amara, I didn't really feel sorry for you because you knew what it was when you signed up and you still wanted to climb up that pole. And this is what you got. Um, you really had got on my nerves when you start analyzing a tweet that that man posted. And that for me, I couldn't take. I said she would have had to get you talking about the tweet face. about FaceTime six. Yes. Yes. You don't think she had a right to be upset about that? Absolutely not. I feel like that's a form of in my personal insecurity that's going on within you. Because you already don't feel secure about the situation y'all got going on. So for him to talk about cheating or anything, that ain't even your girl for you to talk like that anyway. So this is where y'all get yourselves in these oh, situationships right. and then be expecting relationship type things. First of all, the man could have been talking about anything. Somebody could have just said that to him and tweeted it. Somebody, he could have just heard that in a song and tweeted it. But because you're insecure on your position on where you is in his life, you decided to come to this man and try and bring that up in front of him on it and make it a big deal, even though you were dealing with your own issue with your dad. That's really where all the energy kind of came from. But she would have had to get the fuck up out of my face. Like, ain't nobody finna come to me, my mate or anybody coming to me about shit that I'm putting on Twitter because you think that it got something to do with you. Like, that's how a lot of y'all be getting fucked up right now. Somebody will put a post out and it may hit you. They may be talking about somebody completely different. But because maybe you may have done something 
to that person or you're feeling away <laughs> on the inside, you begin to internalize that tweet or that situation as though it's about you. You know, so that's how I took that. I said she would have had to get a, get the hell up out my face. Like, get up off me with that. Mm -mm. That's a good point, Jamie. I could see that because when she came to him with that, it would. I think she was looking for confirmation. Um, she wanted to know where she stood in his life. Is kind of what it felt like. Where do I stand? No I'm gonna act a fool until you tell me what it is. Are we? And are he should have never asked her about what she was doing down in in the Dominican. If you ain't, you know, you ain't her nigga either. It's like, so you shouldn't okay. be worried about this and she, Who the hell do you think you are? I Girl. agree. I agree. Yep. I, I think it's stupid on both ends. Um, first of all, this man already told you he don't want what you want. So for you to continue to act as if y'all are in some type of monogamous relationship, you're being delusional. You're you're being delusional. You need him to say that you are more serious than y'all are so that you can fuck him without feeling bad about it. You're stupid. Just have sex with him and, 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 and let that be it. And if you can't control your emotions when you, you know, let this man's penis touch your insides, then you need to leave him alone. Because you always out here putting 20 on 10 in these relationships thinking that you're about to get something out of it. And you are not. Like, this man had already told you what he's on. And so when he doesn't give you any, like, emotional reaction to what you're going on, please understand it's because he don't give a fuck. He's not the person to go to, girl. He's not, okay? And then she online crying about Alan and how even though Alan wasn't good to his other children, she thought that he was going to be good for her children. Like, girl, you just delusional and it's annoying. Even her mama was like, you know, I know you need help. Why don't you get Safari? Like, Safari going to help her with some fucking kids. Safari not even helping his own ex-wife with their kids. Right. When you had said that uh, she began with these men thinking they're going to give her something, all I thought about was Cardi B saying, babies, and that's it. Ooh, she <laughs> told Peter Guns and them that. When she that's said, it. look at what he gave y'all, babies, and that's it. Better be glad your blood ain't in my bloodstream because I be damned. Yeah, I remember that. Mm. Uh, what else happened on the episode? Uh, other than that, it was all about... Um, Trash ass dudes disrespecting mamas. Um, we saw what's her name, Von Shay and Richard, where he was being disrespectful with her mama. Don't really know too much about them, too. I was just shocked when I seen that they was even together. I was like, ew, why? What's going on? And then we see Shay and uh Fabian. Fabian has a discussion with Shay's mom about. What this has been like three damn episodes ago when they was talking about that dog, but they finally get that one on one meeting, and I just, I, I did, I don't know. I need to know more about the relationship between Shay and her mama, because when she got up from the table, she said, "I hope that the two of y'all figure this out, because if y'all don't, y'all not gonna like my answer." And in her confessional, she ended up saying that she was gonna have to choose a side, and one person will be hurt. And in my mind, I was like, oh, well, shit, she's going to drop the baby daddy. <laughs> but by the end of the episode, it seemed like she's already chosen to distance herself from her mom. Did Shay earlier in the season say why her and her mama didn't have a good relationship? I didn't hear that. I just saw the little flashback where her mama said she failed her. But it made yeah. me think that, that could, she, they always... went in depth last season. Say what, Bondi? Yeah, Her mom has always been an asshole to her. So, like, mm. her mom is one of those moms that kind of treated their girl daughter bad because she looked at herself and saw herself and her girl daughter but coddled her boy children, mm. i.e. MJ and the other brother. So, I, I think she was always mean to Shay. <clears throat> they were on the Yonla and they talked about that. The fact that, you know, when they were kids growing up, she just was very mean to Shay. And it wasn't, you know, and she kind of made Shay take care of her brother. So, like... Shay's relationship with her mom has been bad for the longest. It just now got good, right? When she had her baby, this is when their relationship actually starts to, you know, be, her mom is nice to her versus her mom was not nice to her at all. Like they would have conversations and her mom would just be stale faced, stone faced, don't give a fuck, cold blooded to Shay's feelings. And it's really, it was like hard to watch. But ever since she had the baby, their situation has been a little bit better. 
Um, and in all honesty, I feel like the mom is to blame for why Shay is even in a relationship with Fabo because Fabo is abusive to me. And you've been on and off with this ignorant ass nigga for over a decade, which tells me he's constantly been disrespecting you and making you feel less than over the years. And you just keep going back to him. And now you in this space with your mom where she can see front and center what's going on. And I think it's her fault on some level. And that's not the, you know, put it all on. She has a responsibility to do better for her damn self. But it's given because you were so fucked up to your daughter, she looked validation anywhere. I and agree. This man, yeah, he, he give her a little bit of the validation, but he ain't shit. And I don't like the way he talked to that lady mama because at the end of the day, the least you could do is be nice to my fucking mama, nigga. Like... And the way he corrected her over his name and was like, are you deaf? I was like, what? And Child. she was like calmly trying to ask, why Why don't you, why can't we get along? Why don't you like me? He says the end of the book, chapter close. I was like, what? Yeah, he's crazy. Because again, he was trying to assert his dominance and let, his, uh, let her mm-hmm. mama know, I run this shit. I can disrespect you all I want. And your daughter not going to do nothing about it. She going to stay. So this is what I think, y'all. <laughs> I think Bondi had a point, and this might come left field, okay? I do feel like the mama is to blame for why Shay is with him, but I feel like Shay is a bit of the reason as to why he's disrespectful as fuck to, his, to her mom. Oh, no, you ain't lying. Keep going, Johnny. Go <laughs> because of the the relationship breakdown that Bondi kind of told us how, you know, disrespectful her mom was. I feel like she used him to vent, like not, you know, as the person that she vented to and talked a lot. So I feel like based on what he learned about her mom from Shay, um, I think that has a lot to do with why he has no respect for her at all. On top of the fact that I think he's just a disrespectful in general, right? But I do think that Shay may have... um contributed to that I think she did too and I'm glad you said it because I hadn't I hadn't thought about it until you just like triggered a thought in my mind when I was watching the show I think it was when the mama was sitting down with Shay's brother she said something like I'm not sure why he's acting this way towards me and the way she said it to the brother was almost like she was, and those might have not been her exact words, but basically what I got from it was, I don't know what she told him for him to be acting like this. And for yeah. her to even think that he may have information that would cause him to act like that made me think that, you know, some shit did happen in their relationship. And that's why she was being so patient with him. But she was just unaware of what it was that he knew. So, yeah, I'm glad you said that because I peeped it, too. I just really hate that she ended up hitting her mama up on some, I guess she needs space or whatever. I guess it was like a really disrespectful message. And it's like, Shay, you really think that this man going to marry you, which he not? You really think that you're going to be able to run off into the sunset with this man and have a beautiful life when people are saying he already got some other kids that he really ain't? as involved with and may even be possibly married to that person. Like it's hard because some part of me feel like if you want to be stupid, then you deserve whatever happens. Hate to say it, but just being honest. And I'm just like, why would you? mm." At the end of the day, I understand the dynamics of the relationship with you and your mom. However, when it's coming to that isolated situation, what's going on between you and your mama is between you and your mama. He should have never disrespected her over a conversation about getting a damn dog that belongs to y'all. And it was just a simple sorry. And he sat in your face, made you think he was going to apologize and had that talk only to have a conversation with your mama and do the complete opposite. And I don't even think she heard her mama's side of the story. I think she just rocked with whatever it is he told her, just like she'd been doing, just eating up whatever the hell it is that he told her. Because obviously she's been hanging on since what, about 10 years ago? That's how long they've been dealing with each other. And she just been hanging on. They finally got a child. Like, girl, show you look a fool, girl. Sorry. Look a fool. He was wrong. He should have apologized. Got your clown mask on. Like she always do. Mm hmm. Uh, okay, so I think that's it for love and marriage. Oh, love and marriage. 
y'all know when we say clown ass, my my brain goes straight to love and marriage. Cause can I say this real quick? I just want yeah. to say that I loved how Von Shay's daddy kind of stood up at the gunplay. Yes, he was like, "Cause I, was I know, like, I know about niggas." Okay, listen, I was not. I wish he would have done something. I loved it. He probably didn't because that man was there, and that's the man that was giving her, you know, I guess the the leg up in the industry that she wants to be in. Um, but when that man said, "You about to see a different side of your daddy," I said, "I know that's right." Okay, I know that's right. And see, daddy seemed like he a calculated person too. Like I'm gonna get you. I may not get you yeah. when these cameras here or when I got this man, but I'm on your. As you just wait, young man, I got you though. When I saw Von Shay sitting at that table with Richard, and this again, this is like my first time seeing them, I was like, okay, that's her mama, but that can't be her daddy. Cause if that was her daddy, she would not end up like with a man like Richard. So I was shook. Yeah, mm. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it was a stepdaddy. I don't know. I don't know. Did y'all see her come to social media talking about how um her kid had got her heart disease from him because he was using um coke or whatever. Oh yes. Did you see that, Nisi? No. I could share my screen if you want. Mm -hmm. Yay. Okay, let me try and share my screen and see if he's gonna play. Um uh oh, let me share this one. Heart defect is because of his drug abuse history. Mm -hmm. Like he was the cause of her defect. Y'all can Google this. Anybody who abuses cocaine, ketamine, which she did too, he actually owed you know ketamine twice. Cocaine, ketamine, all those type of things, like it causes cognitive like disorders and dysfunctions and shit like that. So that's why my daughter's heart was fucked up and he took it really hard. And I just wasn't with it. Like I told him once I found out about his history, I was like, look. The moment you start using, I'm out. So I thought giving him that ultimatum was going to like keep him doing well. Clear that she went out the window. Okay, see, someone just said he stopped doing it right before he got with me, but he's been doing that. See, I didn't know that. <laughs> that's what I'm telling y'all. I did not know that. I'm just not finding out. And when I did realize he started using, that's when a lot of our fights were starting. I would ask him, like, why are you sniffing like that? He's very yellow. So it's like his nose would be super red. And he'd be using like the Afrin little nose spray. And I'm like, what's going on? Like, oh, it's just allergies. I believe it because allergy season down here was bad. So I was just a dumbass because I don't know if they're going to air it correctly. But the reason Richard relapsed is because the doctors have told us the reason why my daughter had a heart defect is because of his drug abuse history. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's pretty much what she's saying. I don't know if I believe her story 100%. Um, I think it's a situation where we know what the hell is going on, but because we like where we are, we be in denial about it. And we just like overlook it. Like, eh, you know, I ain't going to like, okay, yeah, you're right. It could be. Yeah, it's I'm allergies. Legally blind. Girl, you, exactly. You know, you know what was going on. And then now you putting that off on him, talking about your daughter had the heart defect because of what he was over there doing. And I don't even, is that true? I need a medical professional. So let me know. I mean, it's, it's definitely a possibility that it could cause issues. Um, mm. But I also mm. feel like she is extremely like stupid about the way she be talking about him. Like, <laughs> What did you think? And also her wanting to be a federal hood. Like, you want to be in the FBI? You want to be working with the police? But you got this nigga as your dude? Like, I, I just don't understand it. Yeah, I It agree. just gives young and slow. It's always people like that, I feel like, who uh, be dumb and they love life. Like, <laughs> what? I just feel like I know too many people that have like multiple degrees amazing jobs and they seem to have the most like book sense and they be the one strung up and be somebody's friend for like 10 years mm -hmm. I can think of three people right now uh oh are these famous um, people or local people nah they friends <laughs> oh they <damn. laughs> Always, bro. Always. <laughs> I could think. I could think of three people right now, and it don't make no sense. That's crazy. Mm. 
I'm glad she finally away from him though. I hope that she never ever ever goes back. The last time he showed his tail and um did he point a gun at her or something like that? Mm. Yeah, he yeah. pointed a rifle at her and the baby. Yeah. No, really? Yeah, what he is? did mm -hmm. at the baby too. That's why he got arrested. Like, and Eric Amina was like, thing? Yeah. Eric Amina was like, Why why he get to still be on the show? I was like, that's an excellent question. Damn, that's a mess. Mm. Okay, we got another one to jump into. You got any other comments on uh, uh, Miami? No. Any no. other uh, comments on Miami, Jamie? Oh, no. No, I don't think so. Okay. So. All right, cool. Let's move on to Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. It was, was this the season finale or no? Yes. yes okay that's what it felt like so y'all know we was off last week and this is when this episode aired which is why we ain't had the chance to discuss it but i feel like we should go ahead and tie this discussion up in a, in a bow so basically what happens this episode is everybody's reactions to erica and the monkey comment including erica's own reaction which is funny as fuck to me mm -hmm. um one well this is what really irked the hell out of me Bambi, because this took me back. And low-key, I was thinking about making this one of our questions to start the show off with, mm -hmm. because not too much, but it was a girl I used to be friends with. She ain't my friend now, so I ain't telling my friend's business. But anyway, she uh, had this birthday party, and she was friends with this white girl. And the white girl was drunk, and she was talking to me and a couple other people and she was saying something about one of her other friends. So it was two white girls at this point speaking to me and a bunch of other people at another girl's birthday party just to set the scene. And the drunk white girl says, oh, well, she don't like her dudes like this because she like her niggas, blah, 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 blah. The white girl said that. And mm. I was like, excuse me, my job to, to make it even, to give you even more context we was work friends. So I worked with the white bitch that said niggas. No. Yes, I worked with her. And after the party, I said to the girls who birthday it was, because I was friends with her. I said, you know, your friend just came over to me and said da 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 da. And she was like, oh, she did. And she like, she didn't trip. She still was fucking with the girl. And I literally told her after that day, like, I do not fuck with this girl, like, at all. At all. Because I know you probably say niggas when you with your white people. But the fact that you was drunk and you decided to get a little bit of courage and say it to a group of black people, like, we was all having casual conversation, had me fucked up. Um, so I felt some type of way because for me, I she would have been done. I would have been stopped fucking with her. Um, but I think that she preferred not to have conflict with this white girl because this white girl was like well liked in the workplace and she still wanted to have the proximity to the girl and kind of like just wrote off that she had said the n word right and to me it felt like that's what bambi was doing this episode mm. bambi okay. slick like wanted to act like she had to hold her friend accountable and you know she didn't want to hold erica accountable because whenever she started off in her confessional, she said, as a black woman, I have the responsibility of holding Erica accountable. That don't mean that you want to. That just means that as a black woman, you know that everybody going to get on your ass if you don't. So it's kind of like, well, shit. shit, let me go ahead and say something and get this out of the way. Because if I don't, as a black woman, I'm going to get lit the fuck up, even though I really don't care that Erica used a racial slur. So I'm going to tell everybody that she apologized. I'm going to let her say that she blacked out when we know she didn't black out. There was a conscious decision to use the word monkey and to make monkey sounds. So that was irky as fuck to me. Um, and the rest of the cast reacts at the end of the episode, which we'll get to. But I wanted to talk about some other things. So before we get into the rest of the show, what was y'all's thoughts on Bambi talking on the phone to Erica about, you know, finding out that she calls Spice a monkey? I think um, that Bambi, some part to me, I feel like Bambi, 
my when I was watching it, right, I'm thinking that Bambi really at first didn't want to have shit to do with it, high key. Like, bitch, <laughs> this whole don't cuss me out. I don't, I don't want to have nothing to do with it, girl. I really don't even want to have this conversation because I'm really not even trying to get in, get into what the hell y'all got going on. Cause they like, nah, I already cussed at me, right? That's what it was given by. I think you might have a, a good point, though, Nisi. Like, she felt forced to hold her accountable because now when I'm thinking about it, when Erica said that she didn't, re I don't even remember that. When somebody, I think Amy asked her, Amy was like, So she did it? Did she say that she did it? She was like, Well, she said she don't remember. So, I mean, girl, like, I mean, I, I'm just going to, it was given, I'm going to take her word for it. So, if she says she don't remember, then I'm just going to accept that. So, I mean, I don't know. If, I think you got a point. I mean, it was coming off a little bit like, I don't want to be in the middle of that shit. But then it also was given, I don't really want to hold my friend accountable for this bullshit because. Saying monkey to this bitch really ain't that big of a deal after she didn't set up being came for me. So that's what it was given. I agree. It absolutely is given. I don't fuck with that girl anyway. So I ain't feel no no strong ways about it. Erica, my friend, and she going through it right now. So I'm going to low-key give her a pass. It, it did feel that way. It did feel like publicly that's the, that's the only reason she was holding her accountable is because it was something that happened publicly. Um, but I feel like, you know, Bambi need to wake up because she not a good friend. She's not a good friend. She already got you involved in some shit because she don't know how to control her liquor. So, yeah, I, I just kind of feel like Bambi need to stop being stupid. I agree. Because that bitch is a fucking liability. I don't care what nobody's talking about. And at any given moment, Erica gonna turn on your ass and then you're gonna be the monkey next. And this is how we know. Mm -hmm. You better learn from Sierra. Because Sierra just when they did a live. She would sit up. She, then she sit up there and talk about like Erica. She learned that Erica was talking about her or whatever the case was. Like you sat with Erica while Erica was talking about other motherfuckers. And you really thought that she wouldn't sit up there and talk about you at some point. You better learn from Sierra why she don't fuck with that girl. But you next, because you done messed around and you done got you a little piece of a charge that'll get dismissed, but you still got it because your friend is a liability. But you still trying to just hang on. And that's your problem too, Bambi. You like to be loyal to motherfuckers when you get signs that you need to jump ship a long fucking time ago. Absolutely. Yeah. You like and to stay around and prove your love and your friendship and all of that. And they don't even be giving you nothing back in return. I think Bambi's a good person. And I just think that you need to be around good people, people that's going to give to you what you give to them. And I don't believe that Scrappy was one of those people. So I never want to see y'all together again. And mm -hmm. I don't believe that Erica is one of those people either. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he over there blaming her, talking about he the one that put her on. And child, no, he did he just say the same. He said the same thing about every every woman he's been with because their relationships get them on the show. That girl so been he, on plenty of reality Erica? shows before him. He sounds yeah. like Safari. No. He oh, sounds like scrappy. Safari. Okay, I thought we was yeah. talking about Safari because it is the same thing he said. <laughs> no, he said I know what you're talking about. Because you sent us the clip with uh, Scrappy. When that man said, in that clip, that's what I should have pulled up. He said he compared himself to God. He said that he was a vessel for her. And that everybody has a vessel. But whenever he said that about himself, he I was is. like, he's crazy. He Who is. said that? Scrappy. Scrappy. Where is that clip at? Let me oh, uh, that was him and Carlos, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, uh Bobby sent it to us. It's on Carl. Um, okay, can I share? Yeah, I'm trying to find it. You you got it, Jamie. I'm on Carlos's page. Okay, here. Uh yeah, pull it up. Is this the one? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, no, it says something. The top, I have it uh, pulled up too. You got it. It says something about. Hold on. Scrap. Oh, you got it pulled up. Okay, I'm gonna share the screen. I'm gonna show your screen. The one for me, like, what God using me? I don't say I'm just, just, but mm -hmm. I'm the vessel that God used. If it weren't for me doing certain shit and making certain moves for you. Some of this shit wouldn't even happen. You know what I'm saying? Like, and guess what? We just named three names: Fifty Cent. I mean, Lil John, Fifty Cent, Luda. They did it for me, and I would tell her like, everybody get help. Ain't nobody coming in this bitch thriving by themselves. Like, everybody gonna have help. And she would be like, Nah, I'm good. I I work for my shit. I'm like, everybody work for their shit. 
everybody do. Anybody that got some work for it. You know what I'm saying? And I don't want to say don't bite the hand and feed you. Just don't disrespect it. Just don't what? don't downplay it. You know what I'm saying? Don't don't try to act like you did everything by yourself. Like you just is. You know what I'm saying? Like if that was the case, then it would have happened a long time ago. Before I came in the picture, it would have happened a long time ago. It would have happened with Benzino. You feel what I'm saying? And that's the crazy part because now, now was y'all together, I'm the one to introduce her to the like show. That? I'm the one to introduce her to Mona and Stephanie and said we were finna do something. But I end up going to jail and rehab. I'm looking at TV. She's coming to the rehab, giving me black and miles, coming to talk to me, bringing me Popeyes and shit. And next thing you know, I'm watching TV and she in the jacuzzi with it. And I'm like, hey, girl, what the f- Oh, no, I knew, but I knew she went up there with them. She said she was getting them girls. That's the kind of shit she played I me. Mean, she said she was getting them girls. And it kind of kind of bragging about it. And like some of the people that was at the rehab seen her come come over there fuck with me and shit. So they were like, damn, that's your girl right there. I was like, and that was the same time Erica had gave me that ring back. And I was in the rehab and she gave me the ring back. That was around the same time. Cause Erica used to drive by the Erica with evil. Eric used to drive by the rehab when she going to a club or something, be like, ha, I just passed you. I just passed your spot. <laughs> all right, all right. Hope everything good. And hang up. And I hear the voice message. I'd be like, why? Wow, you know, you can't really have no phone and I'm hiding something. I'm like, ah, oh, cousin. It's diabolical. You know what I'm saying? Just go stick and move. You know what I'm saying? My exclusive part to interview with Little Scrappy yeah. airs tomorrow. That is crazy. Ah, that is crazy. I just want to hear the first, just the first part what he said that I'm, I'm people may have missed. Cause I used to argue oh. uh, at the end of it about if it weren't for me, like certain shit wouldn't have happened for her. You know what I'm saying? Like if it weren't for me, like what God using me, I ain't gonna say I'm just just, but I'm mm-hmm. the vessel that God used. If it weren't for me doing certain shit and making certain moves for you, some of this shit wouldn't even happen. You know? Boy. <laughs> if exactly. you don't Boy. go sit your ass, I can't. Because we've been support. knowing Bambi. Wasn't Bambi on with Flavor of Love? No, I she like, was on Basketball nah. Wives. She was basketball on, Wives. on Basketball Wives. I think it was like that first season where Brooke and them was on there. She was on there. She's been so, on yeah, reality nah. TV before him. He tripping. I don't know what he's talking about. He is. I almost forgot that. I really used to like Bambi when she was on uh, Basketball Wives. I liked her hair. She was yeah. having some cute bundles. She did. She, she was on show. That's why I don't know why everybody be acting like, oh, she's so, she so reckless with her mouth and all of that. I'm like, that girl be chilling most of the time. I don't know where y'all get that shit from. To me, I feel like Scrappy just needs to feel important. That's why I didn't even want to watch the interview with him and Carlos because I knew that they were going to be basically like verbally jacking each other off. Like he's a he's an amazing this and that and that. And it's just like he don't need to hear no more getting himself off. Like he don't hear that he don't need to hear nothing else good about himself. Like as far as I'm concerned. It's it's annoying to me the way Carlos does the interviews and he's basically like bobbing on his knees and people. Um, it's just, you know, I wish he would stop. But outside of that, I guess I'm I'm just not interested in watching the, the interview. I'm not because I feel like he's not gonna be honest anyway. And I just kind of feel like it's always him looking for somebody to blame. Mm-hmm. Blame somebody. Yeah. Yeah. So um outside of that, this episode we see Spice and Carly, I, I don't even want to call it a fight. No one call it a scruffle. Scuffle, I don't know what. So we're going to get back to like the confessional clips of the monkey comment. But before that, we kind of think that the show going to end. Carly again is saying that she want to be cool with Spice. But every time she thinks about talking to her, she's fearing rejection. So she don't know what to say. So Rashida, the peacemaker, go over to Spice trying to figure out what can we do to make y'all cool. And Spice end up telling her, um, you know, my kids are at my house and Carly had a bunch of dudes outside smoking weed on motorcycles. There was a bunch of people outside. 
come to find out she was renting her house out and I don't feel like it's safe for my kids. So that's why Spice decided to, I, I could barely see what happened, but it looked like she was attempting to fight her. So I feel two ways about this. Like it's given Spice just want to fight her. Um, I don't know. I feel like if you got a problem with her renting her home out, go to HOA. You can't tell her, you can't tell her not to rent her house out. Um, although I do think it is extremely weird to her point that, you know, she went and bought this house and you didn't know nothing about it. So like what's right and what's wrong? Is Carly not allowed to rent her house out? Was she wrong for that? Spice says is wrong and she's been wrong a whole lot this season. I'm tired of her ass and I would love for her to not even return next season. Um, the way you just blow up on people and think that it's okay, but can't nobody else do it to you is such a fucking problem. For me, you just sat up there and apologized to Bambi and talking about how you're working on yourself and all of that. But when somebody tell you to have a conversation with Carly, you want to sit up there and blow it up to be bigger than what the fuck it is. Who the hell do you think that you are to control what it is another person does over there at their property? I, the first thing that crossed my mind was, bitch, she got to pay her mortgage. So I love that Carly said that. She got to pay her mortgage. And why are you over here crying about children that ain't even in the fucking United States? Let's Hello. talk about that. Bitch, you not Hello. even at home. Let's get they into those here. things. You just wanted to attack somebody. And I don't give a fuck. I really do not. People like, oh, my God, she just had a near-death experience. I do not give a fuck what Spice ass had. Spice should she know she had a near-death experience so she needs to be aware of that as she's navigating the streets and her friendships and relationships and shit everybody else should not be walking on pins and needles because this bitch damn near died i don't give a fuck about none of that shit so she needs to be she needs to handle situations a bit more differently knowing that life can be taken away from your ass at any moment because you was damn near there because you're trying to sit over here and fix your fucking body for people that's not even gonna give a damn by the next fucking week what kind of ass you got or titties you done win and got or how flat your fucking stomach is so miss me with all of that bullshit she was dead ass wrong and what i cannot stand is how the damn the 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 cast members uphold her in her bullshit because she's a well-known jamaican artist don't nobody give a fuck Kirk about none of that don't nobody give a damn. She can't revive not damn piece of a career that's sitting up in this bitch. So why do y'all sit up here and cater to this? I don't care nothing about it. And I will say that Erica Mina was wrong as hell for calling you whatever she called you. But bitch, you need to get your big grown ass together because it's giving fake. It's giving fake. And I really don't even appreciate your fucking code switching. The way you set your ass up there at that table, that round table discussion. And I didn't really even hear the Caribbean accent no more. I Like when I wasn't even listening, like when I wasn't watching it and I'm letting it play, I said, who the fuck is that talking? I go over there to the screen. It's motherfucking spice. Girl, I can't. The sympathy ends here. It ended a long time ago. Bitch, we done got Erica Mina up off the table and you're going to keep playing and we're going to get your ass up off of it next because I'm tired. I can't do her. I don't care about what nobody's talking about. I can't say it. I'm tired of her. Hi. Hi, her fake embarrassment for me. Like during the round table, she put her head down. I'm like, oh, bitch, now, now you feel ashamed. Now you feel ashamed. Like, to me, you should have felt the shame talking about that shit you said about that girl son not loving her. Your son don't love you. My son love me. Like, honestly, Spice, if it wasn't a racial slur, the way you had your pussy on them people glass, yeah, girl, you was doing something. You, you was doing something that, that was right. very extracurricular activities. Did y'all not see the way she bent and put her leg up on them people glass and told Erica to and eat out her coochie yep. i was mm -hmm. just i was like girl i mean erica did say that they let all y'all act like animals and listen i'm not gonna argue with her because y'all be doing the most um i'm over spice i've been over spice i've been felt like she was grandstanding i hated the fact that erica said what she said because it really made spice feel like she had ground to stand on with the way that she was at. She really was trying to come at Erica neck real hard over whatever the fuck Safari told her. Kirk and Rashida, I'm tired of y'all too. Y'all need to go to Real Housewives of Atlanta if y'all gonna be boring like this because y'all work on my nerves. First, Kirk trying to force new hair on us and <laughs> y'all trying to sit up here and defend Spice no matter what is going on. 
<laughs> like that was wrong what she did to Carly. Carly can rent out her fucking house if she wants to. Your children are never here. The only time we see them is when they come in or they going. It, it, girl, I'm sorry, but Spice has been working on my nerves. I didn't like the way she attacked Carly and then gonna turn around and say, you know, I need to work on myself. You think so? You think you need to work on yourself? You, you think? <laughs> girl. And then Get them all the way from me. So this is what I want to highlight. And again, I'm not team Erica in this in that situation. But Erica uh, watches the video, talks to uh, uh, no, no, no. Erica talks to Bambi and says that she could not remember what the fuck she said. When Bambi goes and have a conversation with Spice, oh, she couldn't remember. Oh, she couldn't remember. Then you want to get an attitude, right? But when you sit your ass up there to apologize to Bambi, you want to sit up there and say, I apologize. I don't even remember everything that I said. So it's OK for you to not remember, but it's not OK for somebody else to not remember. No, that all because oh, they said some racial things to you bitch noted okay now i will say, say this then. i do feel like though i do feel like erica bitch you remember her because the way your ass looked at that uh video when you she watched did. it again you was withholding laughing again because you thought that she was funny mm -hmm. and you know you exactly did. you know all about giving reality tv moments and that's what you thought you were doing but that shit backfired mm -hmm. when you said the monkey term but she wanted to laugh that's what that was but um spice girl Miss us with it. VH1, since y'all want to handle things so bad, y'all need to handle her. She does not need to return. Let her go be down there with her kids in Jamaica. Yeah, mm. I'm glad you called out Spice saying that she forgot what she said. She she said she was so... she. That's what it was. She said she was so mad she can't even recall the words that came out of her mouth. I was like, what? <laughs> what? Are we really using this as excusable things? But then I try to write it off as uh, at least she didn't go to a racial slur when she forgot. But either way, it's just real interesting that she wanted to get everybody on this campaign to kick Erica off, uh, write her off of the friend group. And then you turn around and like say something that is very similar to what she just said. I'm like, girl, you wrong road. You should have said something else so soon. Right. Um, at the end of the episode, whenever the cast reacts, what did y'all think about everybody's reaction? I will say, um, Sierra, I don't did they start fucking with each other after the show aired? Because the way she acted in her confessional to me was a little bit different than what I was experiencing from her on the show. I'm not know. exactly sure, but what I did clock with Sierra is that when Sierra was telling her story about being left at the bus stop as a kid, Spice laughed her off. Oh, wow. And Spice, Spice laughed her off and was like, oh, you were just late, Sierra. And was and everybody kind of laughed to, you know, kind of soften it. But to me, it was given now, we doing this whole special centered around racial sensitivity because of your ass and you the one being insensitive to this girl telling her story. To me, when we going to deal with the fact that it's a lot of y'all and, you know, like Spice, it's a lot of y'all that think y'all are the only people that have had to deal with racism or had to deal with being looked at as less attractive or not as beautiful because you don't fit a certain preference. So Spice can often, I feel like, be very, yes, very dismissive yes. of what the other people have to say. And that was blaringly honest, you know, I, I mean, obvious to me during the round table. Also, I feel like I'm glad they had the doctor lady up there to kind of guide the conversation. But Jock, Jock, <laughs> this is not the moment for you to be, you know, red pill, manosphere. Oh, we can, you know, black women wear fake hair and y'all contouring y'all face. Why do y'all niggas love to complain about the way black women adorn themselves? Why does it bother you so? I don't understand. Y'all fucking them anyway. Why are mm -hmm. you always mentioning, oh, weaves and, and, and long eyelashes? What is the problem? Because he was low-key talking about that when he was saying that black women are trying to look white by the things that they do to themselves. And it's like, no, baby. I hate when y'all leave out the, the historical context of the reason why black women adorn themselves the way they do. It was much out of force. It was in the laws. 
There are so many reasons why black women don't feel comfortable wearing their own natural hair or going around with no makeup on. And it, it's really not the same thing as the way white people and Asian people and everybody else appropriates our culture and then acts as if we're degenerate for who we are. But when they do it, it's fucking cool. Yeah, that's not the same thing. Nice try, Josh. Clean girl aesthetic. Slick back and gold hoops on the white skin. Yes. Right. Girl. Stop. Yeah, I, I, I noticed a lot of little things in that sit down that was kind of irking my spirit. Mm. Mm. Yeah. I mean, it was cool for what it was. I will say I thought it was comical when they started the episode. They're going to put up their fucking uh, viewer discretion. This episode deals with uh, racial slur. And I'm like, y'all ne- wasn't never going to make no moves to get her off the show until y'all saw the way that people reacted because y'all had everybody come back and share how upset they was that she did call Spice a monkey. So just like when it comes to production, Mona, it just felt kind of comical that they going to start the episode off with some big old disclaimer like we talking about abuse. Um, call this number if you did it up. Like, is it was it ever that deep for y'all? Mm. I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, y'all got any other comments on Love and Hip Hop ATL? No. Nope. Uh-uh. All right. We're gonna get into everybody's favorite show. I think that I call it the favorite show again. Y'all be sure to like the video and then we're gonna get mm-hmm. into Love and Marriage Huntsville. Did you like the video? Did you share it with a friend? I hope you did both so we can all be friends. But y'all, um, Love and Marriage Huntsville, I had to watch the episode twice. And I started out my review talking about, mm, the episode didn't really move me. And then as I started talking through it, I was actually moved. <laughs> like, <laughs> I was like, ah, oh, this and this and this happened. Um, I think it was a pretty good episode. Now that I'm thinking about it. So three main things happened. Um, Nell obviously didn't come to play. She came to collect a check and she's working for every bit of it. Um, We get the baby reveal. Kiki didn't show up. And then we get Mel and Marceau meeting at the end of the episode. But first I want to talk to y'all about Nell. Um, And just a general question before we get into scene by scene. Do y'all think that... Nell and Tisha are actually going to remain in conflict or do you think that Nell actually desires to have a friendship with the Scots? I think she wants I, to have a friendship with them because she acting thirsty for why they didn't invite her to their little espo. I feel like she is going to continue the conflict. Um, yeah, I think she may find it better to beef with them than to um, be cool with them. Mm, I got to agree with um, Bondi. I think that Nell is acting a bit pressed to be friends with them. Even whenever she explained. So at the baby reveal, they end up talking about this. When she starts talking about them not getting an invite to the Black Business Expo. Another thing, are y'all noticing how everybody is saying X with their whole chest because we didn't drag Tisha online calling it the Expo? <laughs> I have not noticed that. I have. It's hilarious. They're saying, (laughs) yes, Kimmy, Tisha, everybody is saying expo, like with their whole chest is is what I'm I'm seeing and what I'm hearing. Um, So anyway, when it comes to this invitation of the Black Business Expo, because that's what it is, we're going to stick to. um, I thought it was thirsty that she said that she had Fletcher call Marceau on the phone before the event to almost try to remind him of the invitation that they extended only for them to get off the phone and not even be part uh, you know, cordially invited to their event. I was like, okay. <laughs> um, that was thirsty to me. And then um, I'm jumping ahead just a little bit. Whenever 
she and Mel had their sit down and Mel asked her, did she want to be friends? Her energy in the scene was completely different than the energy that she had in her confessional. In the scene, she said something like, I'm good on it. Like, she don't have to worry about me. And then um, in the confessional, she gave this long roundabout answer. When you could have said, I don't fuck with the girl or I'm open to being cool with her. It was a long roundabout answer. And she was being very ca- careful with her word selection. She ended up saying, um, you know, things take time and that time is not now. So I was like, okay, cool. The door is open. The mm. door is open. Um, so not only that, Nell ends up talking about, okay, so what's going on with this $100? And Stormy won the damn mute challenge because she ain't saying a word. Ooh, can we talk about Stormy? <laughs> Did y'all notice what I noticed about Stormy? What? What? She fake as fuck. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. She is. Absolutely. She did the same thing to Tisha that she was doing to Mel, which was talking all that shit with the group, but mm-hmm. she's not really the type of person who likes conflict. I think she really is a mm. nice person. I think she really wants to be liked, but I think that's where she has her inner conflict. One-on-one, you don't want to keep that beef going, just like you made up with Mel. One-on-one, you talked to Tisha on the phone and y'all weren't beefing no more. In front of the group, you had to show to the group that you didn't really fuck with Tisha by making sure that you called her husband a bitch to her face. You almost try to punk her so everybody else would think that you was too real. So I really hated the shit. And you could also tell that she want she didn't want to beef because when I said Stormy won the mute challenge, you and Tisha already made up. So you didn't want to talk Ooh. to them about it. So oh, uh, wow. did y'all have any thoughts on that? I, I saw how she was moving. No, I didn't even catch I didn't even catch that. To me, I feel like Nell was doing too much the whole ways around. Like the scene, even though it, it annoyed me the way Stormy and and, and uh, Tisha had decided they were going to be a united front in front of everybody. That annoyed me because you were straight up calling that lady husband a bitch. So it is mad annoying. She for... even used the word bitch the fourth time. She did. D- yeah. She did. It, it's just, I, I didn't understand what was happening. Like, bitch, pick a side because you're confusing us. Also, I thought you and Mel had a conversation. So when Mel came in last week and spoke to you, why, why you couldn't speak back? Like, she's just, I don't know what's going on. And it, it reminds me of when she first came on and kept talking about how, oh, when, when, you know, I don't know what, what's real and what's fake. I don't know what I'm going to get, you know, regardless to either, you know, people being on the show or not on the show. She don't know what she going to get. So that's why I'm like, now it's the same way with you. Cause obviously, obviously you and Tisha had a conversation off camera before y'all came to us now. So yeah, she, she, uh. she low key annoying me. Um, when it comes to Stormy, as I'm thinking about it, I think that was one thing, Bondi, that I, I didn't really care for too much was Stormy not at least saying hey to Mel. Now, I did kind of feel like, in all honesty, that's probably some slick shit I would do if I don't fuck with you, girl. I'm not finna, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, what else is going on? But for the purposes of filming the show and shit, and y'all had this conversation already, I really didn't see nothing wrong with you just saying, like, oh, hey, what's up? And like that's really not gonna hurt you. So what is this persona that you're trying to put out? Like you just so tough with it. I don't. I don't I'm not understanding that. Yeah. Because right. Because at first she she was the one to say like I mean she brought up the expo and said like it was a mess. But then when it's time for us to really talk about it, and now Tisha's there. You want to say um Tisha, you want to explain? I don't need Tisha to explain a fuck ass thing of what happened to me. Let me tell you what the fuck happened to me. Okay, this is how your husband, this is what the hell happened. So I don't think you needed permission from her for that. Like that was, that was some weird stuff that Stormy had going on. I don't know. You're going to have to get that together, girl. But anywho, Miss Nell, listen, I know a lot of people may not like Nell. And y'all trying to say that Nell is messy now. It's so funny because I told y'all earlier on that Nell ass was messy, but didn't nobody want to hear me. Now y'all over here seeing it. But guess what? I like the messy ass Nell right now, honey, because the way she was on Tisha ass, I said, let's go then, honey. Somebody I loved it. I will say this though. I was with Tisha when T- when Nell didn't get an invitation. I didn't think it was that deep because I said it's a public event. You knew what was going on. If you wanted to attend it, bitch, you could have just showed up. Like it really wasn't that deep. Um, in my personal 
Mm, so, it kind of was um, though, because wow. you remember what Marceau's reasoning was for not inviting him. He said y'all were friends with people who we used to be friends with, so that was intentional. I thought they were speaking. Ah, okay, so I'm thinking of just the invitation to be to like be there, not so much as to like speak or anything or have like a table or something like that. I'm with I you thought on that it. they just wanted to like come to the event and just be there. I'm like, it's open to the public, just come. But if they're talking about like being a vendor or even speaking, then I see what you're saying. Like that is a problem. Yeah, it's it's also given that Marceau clearly still has a problem, which, I mean, I ain't saying no breaking news. Everybody know this. He clearly still has a problem with Mel and Martell, and that's why he was trying to distance himself from Nell and Fletcher. Which I and I think also me. he don't want to bring nobody in the mix who know his dirt, Fletcher. Mm. Yeah, because Chris is mm. a part of the clique, the Atlanta clique. Because uh -huh. he did lie on that man talking about he was out there in Atlanta with Chris Fletcher and he was never out there with that man. That man came back and said, I was not. I mean, we went up there, but at the time that Tisha was talking about, I wasn't with you. Yeah. Right. Thank you for the super chat, Ernie. Right. That's messy, though. Yeah, it's strategic. It's strategic. Um, What was also comical as fuck, though? Hold on. What else happened at this show? Um, yeah, so what was also it's comical as fuck <laughs> yeah when she was acting like oh y'all really gonna do this at a baby share like she got any type of morality oh, around right like, like yeah. bitch your husband was going off on arguing with the men outside of your baby shower bitch and you want to sit up here and talk about some oh they talking about this at a baby reveal girl go ahead mm -hmm. you the reason your nigga was outside your baby shower arguing shut up like it's a time and place yeah, you came to somebody damn birthday party talking about somebody else's child bye oh, miss Girl, good night. <laughs> but what was funny as fuck to me though was whenever they showed the flashback of the Fletchers and the Scots eating dinner, and Tisha tried to flex on Neil and say, How do y'all run y'all's businesses? They said 50 50. She said, Oh, well, I'm 85% owner. And Neil said, You own 85% of the business you got kicked out of. Oh, I screamed. <laughs> good night. <laughs> again, again, again. That's the funny part is that she really thought that was a flex on Nell. Like, girl, yeah, oh, you just being used by that man for government contract, like, like Mel told us. That is so funny because you don't, you own eighty five percent of a company that you don't make no decisions on. And when they, when Mel called out this, that uh, rest of the fifteen and how they split it, I was like, oh, girl, Mel just broke down y'all whole plan. It's giving fraud. Go ahead. It's been giving fraud. Girl, that was a mess. Every time there. you turn around, they got another lawsuit or something. And then, oh, oh Lord. Let, let, but you let's own. Just go ahead and move on. Because they work on my nerves. 85% of the company, though. Girl, I cannot take it. I can't take it. Marceau, a whole ass mess. Talking about he ain't want to, uh, what he said? He. What did he bring up? The trying to talk about Mel and her selling t-shirts and shit. He is such a fucking clown to me. That's just the short answer for me. That's the short answer. He's a fucking clown. Um, Tisha is a clownette as she sits next to this man that, <laughs> that she owns majority of the stake in in the company and he gets to run it and do whatever the hell it is that he wants to do. Girl, you cannot... You can't make this stuff up. How embarrassing. Not you own 85% of the company that your ass got kicked out of. Yikes. We hate to see it. The pointing. What else happened during this sit down? That nail in the arm. Not listen, I'm trying to hurry up and get to Kimmy and Maurice because make it make sense for why he thought that shit was so funny about the t-shirts. He always uh, trying to act like make light of the shit the shit that Marceau be doing. Like he's annoying. I think he thought it was so funny because it's probably shit that they be joking about, but he wasn't aware that Marceau would say it in front of other people. <laughs> mm, like a damn idiot. Uh-huh. Oh mess. Kimmy, Kimmy tires me. That's another one. Like Kimmy, Kimmy, we we tired, sweetie. If you not tired, we are. <laughs> we are yeah. completely tired 
Yeah, she. I didn't gave her too many clown masks. That that's why when I said clown masks, I said love and marriage earlier. I was thinking about Kenny. I hate it. She is so like emotionally intelligent that she play her damn self. It's crazy. Um, what else did we talk about? We talked about you mentioned the government contracts, uh, Bondi with Tisha Yay. and Marcel. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad that somebody calling it out. It's a um, scam. It is, and all they fifty eleven nonprofits. Whenever Mel said that they was raising one hundred and fifty thousand dollars for somebody, I was like, "Ooh, how are they getting paid from that?" Because everything they do is gonna turn into some sort of profit. Child, what type of tax break is that? What type of grant are you getting from the government if you start that as a nonprofit? What What are you doing? What is it? Why aren't you just donating $150,000 to damn Habitat Humanity? But mm. yeah. And then they're trying to get the house built. Did y'all, I mean, that Mel said about that they was uh, trying to do for a lesser privileged family. Like, they're the lesser privileged family. The <laughs> fuck? Right. Trying to get a GoFundMe started, and they barely was making any other money. That is some girl, these folks just be out here just trying shit, but y'all want to sit up here and come for somebody and they business and what they doing and then have the audacity to what he said, something like, um, I guess basically they didn't have the history or whatever. They don't have like a I guess a long standing business, whereas he and Tisha does. And it's like, how dare you say some shit like that when you know the whole reason you got scope is because of Martell and Melody. The whole reason oh we even gosh. know who the fuck y'all are is because of Martell and Melody. Say that. Say that. That's exactly what That's I was thinking. That's why I can't I wait like, till Martell get on his head. Where's Martell, by the way? That's what I said. I said he must be on punishment for that um that revenge thing. Oh, you're right. I was thinking he was looking for a house to film in. Girl, but it's probably night. both. Y'all know Martell will film outside in a second. He done filmed outside somebody's house talking to Mel. He done filmed outside talking to Mel Nika. <laughs> You know he will be on my side. <laughs> you know <kid>. mine. <laughs> hey, meet me on the corner of. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly what it's giving. All right, come holler at me over here real quick. No, for real. If he ain't gonna do nothing, he gonna film outside somebody's house screaming and howling in a nice neighborhood. Okay, Ooh, standing near lie. a damn truck. That is always his mo. Being near a white truck, girl. Head to a builder's license. Uh, not a builder's <laughs> license. <laughs> Head to a construction site. No builder's license. <laughs> Just I just holding cannot. pieces of paper for no reason. Like, what you holding pieces of paper for? Like, that's Ooh. that's the plans you about to build something, sir. He he uh, holding a you... blank eight by eleven. I, I feel can't. like he's about to build a clubhouse. No, you ain't go out like that. What y'all mm. think going on with Kiki though? Yes, good question. The people was mad as fuck at me. Why? <laughs> because I said I think she did that shit. I still think she did that shit. Oh, really? I don't know. Yes, I still think she did. But the thing is, it's not that big of a deal to me. And it ain't a big damn deal to Home Depot because they're not going to press charges if the only thing you leave with is a lock. I think that the news station posting that was a clout chase. And people mm. were trying to tell me that, like, oh, well, nothing happened if they didn't press charges. Well, they're not going to press charges if all she took was a lock. Somebody on a five o'clock news channel. Heard who she was, wanted to get some views, wanted to get some clicks to their uh, website. You know, have people click the link when they never click the link. They just read the headline. They wanted some buzz. So I still think she did it, but the people mad at me about it. So mm -hmm. I don't know. Anything is possible. I was wondering if she was going through some type of withdrawals or something when she was in there talking to her husband about being in pain and nobody listening to That's her and everything. So I'm, it, like, I'm sorry. It's still giving. I, I'm addicted to drugs. Is what it's still like, giving. I'm sorry. Cause T, Whether that was the, the thing. methadone or what? Right. It was like she was acting like she didn't understand why they were taking their time or not giving her what it is that she wanted when it came to medicine. Like I need something stronger, and I'm like, you know why they not giving that to you, ma'am? Because of your history with addiction. But what's sad is, you know. Some people may have these situations where they may be addicted, whatever the case is. But it's like maybe she do got something else internally going on with her, possibly. 
And, you know, I hate when doctors are like, well, it, you know, the screenings are things like everything looks fine. Like everything. I mean, you know, we can't see anything from here or there. And it's like but that don't mean ain't that wrong with somebody's body if they like really feel like something's going on. You know, uh, maybe they should have asked for a specialist. Where is there somebody else y'all can recommend us to that could look a little deeper since, you know, whatever y'all talking about is saying everything's OK. But all in all, I don't know what the hell Kiki got going on. But the first thought definitely gave withdrawals of some sort yeah um i don't I know and can i also say this hmm. i'm just kind of wondering kiki's purpose right now Ooh. i don't think I, her is purpose given... is gonna yeah why you to here? be talked about you... yes yes it's not gonna come until she throw that drink on tisha like other than that like why are we talking about kiki what's the point it's not mm. given what it's supposed to gave i really feel like if they wanted us to care about kiki they should have been trying to spray the information that Kiki had on Marceau seasons ago. Because now we don't care. And her being on drugs really just kind of feels like, or her being off drugs and robbing the, the store, all of that feels exploitive. It feels like y'all taking advantage of this lady being in a real, you know, compromising situation is what it feels yeah. like. Like, I can really only take Kiki for real is what I'm saying when she's in scenes with another notable person. But when you just got her and her husband, it's no shade. I do not care. Um, no. At this time, I don't. Like, when she was staying with Mel, I'm intrigued. If she sat with Tisha, I'll be intrigued. You staying with your husband or just somebody else that you bring on the show, I might not be that interested. Mm -mm, I'm the same way. And I do think that I think it was the methadone that had us with, like, a damn race horse. I really do. But that don't, that don't mean that other stuff could also not be going on. Kiki did one interview, and I just don't understand why the internet act like they got all the facts and that we cannot make a hypothesis based on what the show is, is giving us. So, I don't know. And I guess we ain't going to find out because Home Depot ain't going to press charges. This is just a storyline. Keep going back to the fact that Home Depot ain't gonna press no charges, so it is what it is. <laughs> they not. The Home Depot right. ain't gonna press no charges. I think she did it. Some people think she didn't. So I'm like, what? What we gonna do about it? Accused or convicted? <laughs> um. So she outside that of shit. that, you you said she did that shit. She <laughs> did that shit. Like, whatever they say she did, she did that shit. And I don't care shit. what I'm talking about. The way her okay, car was speeding out that parking lot, come on. And how how she was looking in the picture, bitch. You got a scully cap on, you got a jacket, you got a coat. It's too much. When was it that cold in Huntsville? I don't know. Whoa. But she she just doing too much. Mm -mm. Yeah, that's just me. I think she did it, but I don't really care if she did. So yeah, um, Mel and Marcel. I was dis okay. This is what I think made me feel like the episode wasn't that good because I was trying to figure out why I was like disappointed. I was disappointed that they left this sit down between Mel and Marceau as a to be continued because why the fuck? It was, it, I guarantee you, ain't nothing gonna happen next week to have us really shook to the core to where they should have split this and gave us a cliffhanger. Facts. They're just gonna replay this same clip at the top of the episode with maybe. 30 seconds left of the conversation. Now we yes. They're going to add some stuff in there that they didn't add in the first time. They always do that. Mm. Replay it and then add in more of the conversation that they didn't add in on the back end last time. Ciao. Yeah. Highlighting um, his ignorance. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> Mel was funny to me when she showed up ready to talk about the t-shirt thing. And she said, I just want to, I just came here thinking about what Miss Carol would want me to do. Would she want me to go over here or would she want me to cut your ass out? Like, that's basically mm -hmm. what she was telling him. Would she want me to be polite or am I here to, yeah. Um, she was very patient for the most part at the beginning of the conversation. Uh, I will say throughout the whole thing and he was trying to act like he had some sense. But what I did feel like was Marceau didn't really want the smoke because he was tiptoeing around what he said he said why well, didn't call you by name and then turned around and said everything but her name i said i'm not gonna pay somebody to come and talk about their t-shirt business so it's like 
are we really gonna play dumb? I think that Marcel is shocked whenever people don't like trick themselves into being, you know, second grade reader level in order to believe what he's saying. I'm just not, I'm not going to pay somebody to come and talk about their t-shirt business. I feel like that is such a fucking insult. You think that it's supposed to land only for whoever you're trying to hit, which is male. But it applies to, so I feel like you undermining your own community. And a lot of those people, they actually make a living from doing fucking t-shirts. You I know, can only imagine what they say about the YouTubers with the YouTube awards. Remember, exactly. Oh, yeah. Meanwhile, you ain't doing shit, but selling credit repair. It's the same shit a lot of YouTubers was doing, Maurice. Okay, mm. you had to get you a whole woman to help put you through fucking school in order for you to go get a lawyer's uh, uh degree and a license, so you can do a uh, real estate closing. We don't never see you do it on TV, but we just going to assume that's what you over there doing. It's aggravating this shit for y'all to look down on people when all of y'all have records. Ooh. Marceau and Tisha specifically, y'all wouldn't have shit if it wasn't for Mel. Y'all was over there looking dusty and poor like everybody else before Mel brought y'all on this show <laughs> and exposed her, her peanut head cheating ass husband. But to be clear, y'all perpetrate. Don't none of y'all have what y'all pretend y'all have because Marceau, at the end of the day, sweetheart, the bare minimum that you as a father and a husband is supposed to provide a home, you can't seem to do it, can you? Mm. Ain't even got a house to piss in, window to throw it out, okay? Pot to piss in, window to throw it out. I'm just saying, like, how many times you going to move from, from pillar to post with your three children not providing a lick of goddamn stability but won't, won't be talking to people like you know what the fuck you doing? Child, please. Mel's five kids, even with divorce and, uh, and, and moving from one place to another, have probably had more stability four. than, Come than on. your... Oh, I'm sorry. Four kids. Y'all have had less stability than Mel and her four kids sitting up here talking about, oh, you want my kids to grow up in a single parent household. Nigga, you want your kids to grow up in a single parent household. First of household. all, they're already in a single parent household. Hello. What the fuck is we talking about? You don't even live there, nigga. Yeah, you don't that's even very live much there. accurate. Like she's a single married woman. The fuck is he talking about? Y'all are already there. So her removing you is nothing because you constantly removing your goddamn self. So just let us know what trip your ass going on by yourself this year overseas. Okay. <laughs> or in your in sports car. Okay, listen. In your little sports car wrecking it with whoever was in a car with you. Lying ass. Ain't he lying? Damn, that just and made me think about Terry yeah. J. Say what? Who was in his car? Hey. Is it, yeah, y'all y'all have not known that it's a mystery going on Y'all be digging Terrence up people's tweets, but y'all ain't over there digging up who the hell was in Terrence's car. That's what we need. <laughs> not y'all digging up tweets from I don't know how many years ago. Get mm -hmm. that information. Please. Um, but yeah, he said he didn't think highly of the business that he was in. And Mel said. Something like you don't want, I, I don't know exactly what she said word for word, but it was something along the lines of you don't want Tisha to gain the strength of a woman like me or something for whenever she leave your lying ass. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. basically saying how, how over the years he's caused a lot of discourse between the two of them because he doesn't want Tisha to get smart, wising up and leave his ass because if she leaves, then he'll be much like Martell, left with nothing. That's true. And she gonna take that eighty five percent of the business, okay. whether it's profitable or not. Yay! Mm -hmm. Solidate, sell it, move on like Maya girl. But Tisha will never leave Marceau. If Tisha leaves Marceau, it's gonna be like Monique, where she's not gonna be on the, on any show anymore. Yeah. So she can yes. like divorce him in peace type thing because right now Tisha is all about proving a point. Uh -huh. And honestly, that might be what has kept her in the marriage thus this far. And um, well, before she got to the show and then now. So like before she got on the show, I feel like her fam, she was trying to prove something to her family. 
I feel of not being like a, a statistic, a single mom or whatever. Now she's on the show. It's more so proven to the fans that we can't break up anything. So once they divorce, I, I'm sorry, once this show goes away, I feel like give it some time. And Tisha is going to file for, for a divorce from that man. And she going to be on some peace because she ain't got to, you know, showcase that, mm -hmm. address that to anybody, block and lock up her Instagram page as she deems necessary. Yeah, yeah, I think that's uh, yeah, I can definitely yeah. see that because when they were sitting there calling him, it, oh, another thing, it wasn't until Kimmy, it was the fourth time, so they just said that Marceau act like a woman three times. Time number four, Stormy flat out said he act like a bitch, and when he did, Tisha, I mean, whenever she did, Tisha still didn't say nothing until Kimmy said, nah, he don't act like a woman. And Tisha tried to jump in before Kimmy could finish her sentence, almost to make sure that it was put out there that she defended her husband, even though it kind of felt like she really didn't want to. So I think that she's open to what Mel is saying. Yeah, you want to be her friend, but you didn't tell her that she the closest thing. What she say, devil in sheep's clothing. Um... Mm -hmm. Because your husband is getting in your brain. And I think for whatever reason, she she she's starting to see the light. Have y'all noticed we ain't heard from Dr. Francis pretty much since he didn't did that interview with us? Yep. Yep. I was thinking about that because that's who she need to see. And Dr. Francis also was kind of given what Dr. Kenneth was giving Drew. Um, where you able, like they know the answer the whole time. They just need somebody to say it out loud because if not they'll continue to live in delusion so i don't know if it's dr francis or somebody else but i feel like tisha got somebody who is you know not living in delusion just saying everything what it is in black and white and she seems to be i don't know it's given that she's not really fucking with him and last season was very fake every scene we gonna make sure we kiss on the cheek you gonna call me babe every other word and that's what we gonna do every time the people see us it's been fake. It's been we fronting for the cameras. They're exhausting. Mm. Yeah, I they did a fake shit. That this the season before to me felt more calculated to make it seem like they had their shit together though. Clean up. Yeah, for sure. Especially with uh the Kiki situation. Like when she was supposed to out them and that never happened. Yeah, I feel like they definitely came in after the fact trying to clean up behind that one. Mm. Hmm. And whatever Kiki say this season about the threesome, I don't think that it's going to be impactful in any way. You probably right. I don't think it will be. I really don't. Because I think she done lost a little bit of her credibility going into the show when it comes to this whole Home Depot thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. fucking -lutely. I think that it was lost when she took forever to really just air the shit out. Oh, yeah. And then it was, uh, and then the shit she did decide to share was the damn text message. At right. The end. It was like, girl, come on now. Mm. She did not do a good job. Mm -mm. No. Well, too late. Any other comments on Love and Marriage Huntsville, y'all? Uh-uh. Well, that's it, y'all. That's it for tonight's show. I had a good time. I had fun talking to y'all. We had over a thousand people in the chat. I hope y'all liked the video. Hope y'all share it with your friends. And join us next week when we're going to be on Bondi Channel. Follow mm -hmm. us on all social media platforms. Jamie, that's me, Bondi Blue, Nisi Dixon. You can also... Follow us at Ooh Ladies First. Email us if you need to talk about something. We might read it on the show. So like, comment, subscribe, and have a good night, y'all. Bye. Bye.